And I hit the wrong button. I'm going to do that again. Yeah, professional. No. <laughs> right, this is going to be a really ad hoc episode. Uh, good morning, good evening, and good night to citizens that are watching and listening. Um, I, it looks like I'm alone, but I'm not actually alone. Agra, do you want to tell me what's going on and why you're on the phone? Yep. It's a power outage. Woo! Oh, joy. Yeah, everyone's favorite uh, time. <laughs> That's right. Sitting in the dark. Ooh. Yeah. So 5 a.m. and you can just picture Agrid sitting in a dark room with the only light being from his phone. And he's actually had to plug his phone into his UPS to get it working. <laughs> yeah. Oh, joy. So, yeah. Yes. Happy Friday in the up over. It's actually Saturday morning. Uh, Agrid just said it. Can't even have his coffee because there's no power. So he's a grumpy sitting in the dark. Oh, yeah. Man. So, yeah. Grumpy, splitting headache, caffeine withdrawal. Yep. So we're going to put off um, ISC to hopefully his power comes back on and, and we'll watch that uh, down the road. Um, but other than that, uh, we've also got... Uh, what was the other thing we had to do? There was something else we... Oh, anyway, it'll come back to me anyway. Uh, oh, actually, i got to get the bot bottom one, don't I? Let's forget that. Right. There is the um, GoFundMe stuff. I think yeah. that might have been the other stuff we we'll, needed to do. We'll go through that as well. So yeah, me and Agrid, after we did a vote, obviously you guys uh, probably saw that. Actually, I can probably bring that up real quick. Hang on, give me a second. Mm -hmm. well, the bot, the bot, bot can't find live yet, so it's too early to put it up. So it's got to give it a minute to perpetuate. Uh, we did this. Hang on, flip it over. So we did a, a poll with you guys, and we were very surprised by those results. Now that's not fifty fifty, but we were expecting maybe ten percent of people. But when it comes back with forty five percent, we were kind of like, "Wow, that's yeah. a lot of people." <laughs> um so we indeed were... uh, yeah go ahead yeah indeed and you know we we'd had you guys for weeks saying please run and go fund me mm. let us help you and we're like oh, i don't know but in the end we thought okay we'll do it so that's what we've done i will grab this and i'll, I'll actually i've got to put it in both chats but i haven't got mm -hmm. set up yeah i need to as well hang on so there's the gofundme link um and give me a second and i'll open it up on this page so we can see but yeah me and i are going to organize this there's a little video that we've done um talking about it on that and it explains all our costs um and we've kind of done little stretch goals that we thought were kind of fun so um first one is so that, so, so the other thing i will say up front and i've put it in italics here we actually have to pay 30 percent tax because of the way we're like um from out of the country and stuff. So basically, uh, 3,250 would get me there, 6,500 would get both of us there, and then 7,800, this is kind of like the pipe dream, um, is, is for a bit of extra equipment to convert stuff that we've already got, uh, so we can take it with us into a portable steaming rig, steam, streaming rig, so we can do it on the floor um, and basically take it around and, and, and you know, like take you guys with yeah. us essentially. Um, but basically, if this works, we're going to CitizenCon to work. Yeah, essentially. So if you guys fund us, we're working at CitizenCon. If not, then if any of us go, we're just going for fun. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's it, it literally is halfway around the world um, for me, uh, if you actually kind of look on a map as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I, I'm not gonna, uh, I don't know, do you want to watch the video we did, Agrid, or do you reckon it's better just to let them kind of look at it on their own? It only goes for a couple of minutes, but I, I think they can watch it on their own, yeah? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's basically, right. basically us just kind of almost detailing out what's written here anyway. Uh, in, in, in fact, it's almost, yeah, us detailing what's written there and basically just doing what we just did. Yep. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, let me get these <laughs> chats set up real quick. Um... Is there anything else you want to talk about in regards to that? Just why I'm doing these, uh, the usual yeah. um, set up. I suppose the biggest thing is, as we said, our, our goal is to, or our desire is to not just go, but hopefully be able to give good coverage for everyone from, I suppose, a non CIG source. Yeah, we get, yeah, we get the, the CIG guys going around the floor and talking and, and doing snippets. But we've yet to see good uh, audio and good video from the floor from anyone else. 
Uh, I know that Paul and Space did a live hookup last year. I had uh, cheaper mics, so one of the things we're we're hoping to do is mm. is have p- good quality portable mics. Uh, so agree? that type of stuff is is what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, and um, we, we've got a lot of the stuff. It's just mm. a lot of it is uh, kind of converting it to portability. Um, is, yeah. is, is the thing. So, yeah, but yeah, that's the tail end of it. But most of it is get, getting us there. To be honest with you, like I. I it is so much more expensive going to Manchester than I thought it would be. It's almost double from what, what it was going to LA. Uh, it's kind mm-hmm. of it's kind of crazy how much it's gone up. Um, but yeah, it's also that much further again. Uh, so I think oh, look, it's a I think it's a seventeen hour flight to LA, and then it's a twenty seven hour flight to to yeah. London, and then that's not even the connecting parts. That's just from main city to main city. We've also got to go from. Yeah. I've got to go from where I am to where you are, and then I've got to go from yeah. um, London to Manchester as well. So, yeah. yeah. Crazy, crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, even like even normally, the, the airfare to mm. London versus airfare to LA is usually, mm. you know, almost double. Yeah. Um, that's been my experience in the past, where I've been to the States a couple of times and yeah. not to London. And that... That money is based on what the tickets are right now, by the way. So if the tickets go up in price, that obviously would have to cover that ourselves. It also doesn't cover the tickets to actual citizen gun. It doesn't cover those. So there are a few other things that will like that's that is essentially the bare minimum. Um we didn't want to go like absolutely crazy town, so we will be covering some of the stuff ourselves, but that is that that is the lion's share, obviously. Um and, and well, apparently go ahead. Apparently I, I sound like a news anchor. Well, there you go. You sound like you're on a mobile phone, well, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I thought when we did the sound test. I thought, yeah, yeah. oh, man, that sounds really bad. Um, mm. But Shem Pasta says, mm. oh, God, it sounds like a news anchor. Yes, he does. But um, obviously, he'll know when his power comes back on, and then it'll, be, it'll give him a couple of minutes, and he'll transfer over. So we'll be right then. Hopefully, he can get back on a feed. But yeah. All right. Um, as for Star Citizen news, um, we're kind of looking at, um, like there's some rapid, um, you know, you guys would know we're up to now. We're getting those rapid patches coming in. So mm. we're getting to that point where it looks like it's going to be sooner rather than later. Not July, like some people suggested, but, um, yeah, it's getting a bit more rapid for some of that stuff. Very good. You mean, it, it, it seems like the dam gates are opening. Yes. The dam is busting. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, I'm, I, I, I kind of, you know, what are we, mid-February, essentially? Um, that's yeah. kind of on par with what I'd be saying. And then you got March, April, you know, and then end of May is Invictus. Like, so still got another three mm. months to to Invictus. That's just kind of, we're in for some good stuff this year. That's all I can say. If that's what's coming, yeah. um, we're going to be eating pretty by the end of this year. And um, it's to be expected. And... Uh, they haven't announced it yet, obviously, but like it, man. I, if it's not if it's not the release of the game by the end of this year, uh, and when I say the game, I mean you know Squadron Forty Two. I'll be Gordon, yeah. yeah, really, really surprised. And, um, you know, from from other leaked sources, we're hearing things like um, Star Citizen by twenty twenty five. That makes all, a lot, you know, two years time on top of the engine. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me because you've got that foundational tech in a way like Star Citizen's in a really good foundational place and just taking that mm. and extending it for two years plus you've now got half the people working on it. I- I'm kind of doing the math algorithm. Like we almost would be at the point by... Now, and I'm just, I'm just going to chuck this out there. You feel free to, um, to shoot me down, right? Um, two years from now... Right, so we're we're talking the end of twenty twenty five or twenty twenty six. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'll probably say. Yep, end of twenty twenty six. If it's two that, years, yep. That could be episode two as well. That's two years. So I'm talking like two years after Squadron's out. You'd expect episode two would be there too. It's, it, it's conceivable because you've you've also just got the like the there's no tech barriers so to speak in place it is literally just them crunching and making the levels again um you know updating the tech a bit and anyone that's done game development before they like to do thirds so they tend to go a third new a third modified and a third the same right Mm. so again that just cuts the time down 
um so you'd see cert certain things upgrade certain things new um it really i think the biggest barrier you, you know you correct me if i'm wrong right and i'm trying to to put it in terms of this game specifically i think most of it would be the the, the filming would be the biggest um, mm, yeah hurdle because yeah. you've got to get all those actors and that back you know in a, in a uh, convenient time frame yeah, I think that would probably be the, the biggest thing um, in terms of getting, you know, the script and the actors doing doing the new mm. doing the new part. But in terms of the tech, the tech's already there. Mm. They don't need to rewrite the the engine. Yeah. And you know from other games that once the engine's there and you're building on the next game, the window between the games is, is significantly smaller. So mm. yeah. You'd, you'd be uh, so, so. I'm getting uh, things from Citizen Scott saying like Squadron Forty Two ended in uh, Polish at the end of 2023. It, it's releases in 2025. That's two years. There's no chance you'd get a Chapter Two built and polished in two years. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that you can. If you look at most expansion games, they come. So, so a normal game is usually three years, right? Um, this had all these problems because it had tech hurdles in place and lack of people right we've now hit 1300 people right so it's consumable in the next year they'll get another 100 people that they talked about getting right so it brings them up to the original plan of 1400 so you would then have 700 people that is more than that you've had for those entire 10 years working on this start to do the math you've already got a lot of the tech in place right you don't have to reinvent the wheel anymore it's just now going forward, continuing to make what you've already made on top of what you've already got. It is conceivable that the time frame will be a lot shorter. And uh, we do have previous statements. Now, again, I'm again, I'm taking this all with a grain of salt, but I'm, I'm just talking, trying to get you guys conceivably to start thinking about this. Is Do you remember when um, Brian Chambers came out and said it'll be at least two years once the release of Squadron comes out before you get the next episode. Do you remember that? It was a while ago now, but do you mm -hmm. remember that? Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to get you to conceive the thought of the gap between episode one and episode two, right? So I don't think, what I'm, what, what I'm trying to say, and I agree, you, you correct me if you think I'm wrong here, is I don't think the drought will be as long as what we've had now, right? It, it's not going to be another 10 years, is it, Agri? Um, oh, one would certainly hope not. And yeah. and the reason why you you can say it won't be is because the tech's there. Mm. They've built their tech from the ground up with mm. the idea that they can actually add stuff to it. Yeah, I can recall Chris talking about you know when people said, "Oh, why didn't you do it like yeah. uh, Elite? Elite yeah. built their game with the idea of we'll build the tech as we go, and mm. then we'll shoehorn stuff in." Yep. Chris said, "Well, that's one way you can do it. We took the approach of build our tech to take what we want." And then put stuff in so we're not shoehorning stuff in we've actually got the hooks that's why ready for it that's also why it's taken so long because fundamentally if you look at it they've extended the, the what the game is three times so the after kickstarter they extended it after you know frankfurt came along and added in um puberty planet they extended it again and changed the whole thing that's why um answer the call 2016 2017 never happened because the, the tech fundamentally changed you can go back and look at those videos and you can just see the dramatic shift in the engine they came along and infected the game well not infected but affected the game in such yeah. a positive way what we're getting is another upgrade that's what we got and that's why it took so much longer again but i can remember chris saying at the same mm. time when, when people to planet came along this is the type of stuff i thought I, I wanted, but I yeah. didn't think we'd be able to do it for five years or something like that. It was that type of yeah, that would have been episode two or change. three. You know, that's that's yeah. that's what he was thinking. He was thinking like much further down the line, but that was a, 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 an entire rework. And when they had it right there in their hands, and they they kind of went, "We we've got the money, we've got the funds, let's do it now." So it, it essentially restarted. At, you know that you know there's literally yeah. talk that you will be playing the game by the end of this year in 2017 2016 that's what they said never happened but you can also tell that it blew out everything involved so if you think about how much that directly would affect the game you're essentially going from a complete space game like they had 
like it was fly by wire when you went down to landing zones back then. Yeah. Right? So they, they've gone back in and they've added in all these land based levels and stuff. So it was all yeah. space and landing zone levels, and now it's just like what we play in the PU. Like it is really big sandboxy type stuff. So they've changed everything. You've got this entire system and, to play in. Yeah, and it wasn't even land by spline where you where you literally still fly mm. your ship down. It was literally you mm. call landing control, they take control yeah. of your ship and bring you in. And yeah, you can walk around your ship, but mm. it's the <laughs> you're no longer in control. It, yeah, it, that's totally different. Totally different. So, so this is there's a really great question here from a first time chatter called Hunter Rose says, "Will there be another tech upgrade for Episode Two that may push back um, further than two years?" That's the question. That's the question you should what? be asking, because chances are, it, 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 conceivably, there's a yes, but more than likely, it's a no, right? Because like, what's going to really come along that's fundamentally going to add to the game? that's going to go beyond the wait we've had to wait for server meshing and, you know, wait for, um, you know, object container streaming and all that type of thing. There probably will be new engine upgrades, like, and most of them will probably be graphical. So, like, now we're waiting on Vulkan and DirectX 12. In those two years, they're the type of things that will probably upgrade. But you're not going to see massive things like server tech come along in the next two years, and you're not going to see all those other foundational things need to be there. So we're talking upgrades not new tech right yeah. and so you know let, let's be honest knowing the size of this game and how long they are so hyper optimistic it's probably going to be three years not two years right but i'm just trying mm. my whole reason for talking about this was just to get you the thought process rolling of i'm not going to have to be waiting as long as i've already waited right that, that that's my thought process here right is to just to get you guys to start conceiving of now they've got more people working on this. Now they've, you know, because those people, some of them are going to go work on, on Star Citizen. That's what they're doing right now. But I guarantee you there are people in the throes of already starting to work on episode two. I guarantee it. That there'd be designers working on it. There'd be concept artists starting to work on it and things like that. At the, you know, you heard about pre-production and stuff like that. They'd be moving on to that. Actually, someone that you could probably talk to already, Algrid, and you'd, you'd know this from, from the law and stuff, be Dave Haddock. He would have had it all planned yep. years in advance. I wouldn't be surprised if Dave Haddock's got the script. Yep. At least the bare bones of a script already done. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris yep. and Dave back in 2014 had or 13 had actually mapped out well, the it. whole script yeah, for, for the entire game. Yep, and think about how many times I've had to redo that every time the game went up in quality extend it and you let layers change layer, levels oh, I said layers I meant levels change levels yeah. to be that we're on foot to be on a, a planet or add vehicle chases and all that they would have been manipulating the hell out of that thing they would have kind of been setting the groundwork for the entire story and it will be no different now every time they go in hey Pete nice to see you buddy Captain Explorer, nice to see you buddy oh thank you for the tier description as well appreciate it very much so uh pete uh, i'll just do it out again now i've got a few more people here i'll, I'll just uh because because pete i didn't talk to pete this week but pete we did this we did a thing we did a, a go fund me we did a, we did a thing yeah we did that a thing oh clarkson um, not much clarkson yeah we had um so we did this poll and 45 percent of people said they'd like to help us to go to citizen con we thought that was insanely high we were expecting like 10 percent, not 45 and there's a lot of votes in that there was what was it um 500 or so 524 votes it says and then yeah so we've done this so if you want to look at gofundme i i can link it in the chat actually i probably should uh nope that is the wrong thing that is the chat i need to copy that again back to our group um but yeah i don't know we were surprised by the gofundme anyway we do have a couple of questions our grid that people have uh, we do in. um so we're going to get started on that. But if you do have any questions about anything, um, why I haven't shaved my beard, things like that, anything you want to talk about, just uh, check out in chat with the word question and we will get on to that anyway. Right, that's enough to go fund me. But yeah, if you want to support me and Agra getting the citizen coming this year, that's what that's all about. And there's a nice little video there if you want to watch that in your own time. Agra is also on the phone because he's got no power. In the dark. <laughs> I'm literally in the dark. So yeah, that's kind of funny. Right. Yep. First question, Algrid. I will be reading them today, so you'll have to bear with me because I'm 
man of any hats today. Right, so we've only got four questions. Really quick stream, Agrid. Good. Really quick stream. Right. Um, Dimaco says, question, with the leaving of Todd Pappy and Tony Zed taking over, do you think development will go faster or stay the same? That's a really given that, I think... Well, I think given that Tony Z has been kind of that lead of the live mm. gameplay for a long time. Yeah. I don't think much has changed. Um, no. Um, you know, they're at 30, 1,300 people now. Um, and as we come up to the rounding of Squadron 42, they're going to have a lot of people move on. Like, nine years yeah. is a hell of a long time. Um, I have explained this before, but I'm sure there's people that haven't heard it. You know, um, there would have been people there that this was their first game, and you generally in the in the industry you want to have at least one ship game before most studios will hire you. But CIG takes chances on people because they need a lot of people, right? So, but those people have been waiting for this game to ship so they can, you know, they, they might have a spouse that's in another country or anything like that. But nine years is a really long time. It's like three yeah. times the average game development length. So there is going to be a, a fundamental shift where they will go. I would not be surprised if they went down by at least a hundred people when this thing wraps up, and then and then you know and then and, they slowly go back up again. And then when you look at turnover in in any industry, most people seem to stay in a job for five years or so and then shift. Yeah. So nine years is nine years is a long time to be in, to be with CIG, mm. and if I look at Todd Pappy's, you know, when it, when it started, well, we had a look at his LinkedIn page and all the rest of it. Yep. And his job, his role, his thing that he loves to do is set up teams. Yeah. And he's done that. Yeah. And I'd say that in it, both it, cases, he'd have the Squadron 42 one down pat and he'd and again, yeah. um, most of the stuff at Montreal and stuff, he probably helped and assisted with that and that's already in place. So his yep. job is kind he, of he, done. As Todd Pappy leaves, he's doing his best Superman mm -hmm. impression. My job here is done. Yeah, that's it. Um, you know, it's it's not it's not the end of the world. The sky is not falling. Yeah, it's... Um, like some people might have you believe, but yeah, in disbelief again as things like that happen. But yeah, yeah, we wish Todd well, and obviously, um, you know, um, and people get their own dreams over time too. They've helped Chris make his team. He might have his own dream yeah. of a game that he wants to make. So yeah, we wish him well and. Um, Thanks for his, uh, and, and I know that, yeah, and I know there are some some backers, or not some backers, some of the mm. original guys who came in were, were mates of Chris's as well from way back, and I can't remember whether, mm. whether Todd was one of those old mates as well. So it's not, mm. I don't think there's the, I don't think there's any nefarious things going on. I don't think there's any problems. It's just, it's time. I think he came, I'm not sure if he came with Frankfurt or he came with something else and then went to Frankfurt. I can't quite remember how that panned out again. Now it's been quite a while. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking he may have come with Frankfurt you know, mainly because before Squadron, he was working with Crytek. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. We've got a, a good as mine. Yeah. We've got a super chat there by John Ski. We can come back to that question in a moment. But he basically says, John Ski says, is the Scandal game package worth $695 in buyback? And he gave us a $5 super chat. Well, Mr. Jonski, I did pull that up while I was looking at it. So this is the Scoundrel mm -hmm. pack, Agrid. I'll just go through it real quick. So it's got a, a Caterpillar, a Mercury Star on it, a Cutlass Black, a Hawk, a Dragonfly, and a Ranger CV. Um, now, the way I kind of look at this stuff, Agrid, now you correct me if you think I'm kind of wrong here, is I kind of math it out. And then on top of that, I go, do I essentially need those extra LTI tokens? Now, you're a you're a yeah. packaged man more than I am, so I'll let you take the lead on this one. So, what's your thoughts on that? So, when I'm looking at a package, I look at the value of the ships. Mm -hmm. What what does the total value of the ships give me against the price? Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm looking. I want at least a, a ten percent discount, absolute bare minimum. Give me a ten percent discount on the ships. No, so, I want any higher than that is it, even better. So, so, so that's the type of thing I look at when I'm if I'm looking for a pack to yeah. be good value. All right, so three thirty, right. two sixty. So we're up to what's that? That's uh, five ninety, and then one hundred and ten. That goes to what? That's six hundred, seven hundred. So we're already at that with just the first three ships, right? 
So you're essentially getting these three at the bottom for free, essentially. So you're getting, what's this at? 40 bucks for this. And I think this is around about, or well, 35 actually. Isn't it? Is it 35 for a Dragonfly? God, I haven't looked at the price of a Dragonfly in a while. Do you remember, Agrid? Is it 35 or 40? I'm going to guess it's about 40. And I think I'm going to put it at the same price that I think the um, Aurora Elen is at. Yeah, so it's not it's not terrible. I, I think that's quite good value, reason. Like, uh, but that would be that's yeah. more than ten percent too. Uh, by my math, so yeah, and that the, seems like a pretty good deal to me, Agrid. And then the other thing I look at is what else is in the pack. So this has got Squadron Forty Two, so that's another mm-hmm. fifteen twenty bucks. Yep. We've got twenty thousand dollars UEC. Got mm-hmm. the LTI. So if you're looking for LTI tokens, everything in that pack covered. Yeah. Uh, and then the question is. Do I, what do I want to convert those ships to? Yeah, because I'd be looking at converting um, at least the bottom three, um, if yeah. not the Cutlass as well. So you, you really are talking a, a lot of LTI tokens there, because so, most of what me and Agra would be recommending is is upgrading those, yeah? Those, yeah, those four. Uh, and, oh. and it might be, you know, if you buy that pack, it might be you actually want every one of those ships and yep. vehicles. Great, That's fantastic if you do. Mm. <laughs> if you want all that, perfect, bang. If you're saying, well, I want X, but I want to change one, then that one six, that one CC you change your build from that. Yeah. Um, the biggest difficulty with packs, and I know this is the thing you hate about them, is you're locked in. Yeah. That's, um, that's essentially it. You are, you're, a, you're locking yourself into six things, right? So you've got to make now, sure you want six things, and we tend to not recommend... Like, that's now, why I fix my fleet is a thing. We're trying to fix the problem you've created, but we're not saying go out and buy a whole fleet. We don't re- recommend that. We just, like, get one good big ship and th- that's it. And not even yeah. that. You don't. You really don't need anything beyond the starter pack. You, you don't. You, you know? don't. So, now, if you are looking at, at CCUing, if you've got ships in a pack and you're looking at CCUing, if you yeah. use the usual thing that's said about CCUing, don't CCU until mm. you're ready to apply, if you do the same thing, you... St- in a sense, you're still not locked in because you, while you're, until you've applied those CCUs, you can pivot any time. The harder thing about CCUing in a pack is if you've CCU'd five ships and you're on your last one and you botch something up severely, mm. to undo it, you've got to undo the whole lot. And I, that's where it becomes. I'd almost say up. don't put anything into the pack until you have cemented the CCU chains, you know exactly yeah. what you want, exactly where you're going to go, and methodically have it all planned out in Excel sheets, and then apply them from the, the pack into the final form. And yeah. I, 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 I would be so methodical with it. Like, I'm not funny. Like, you know what I you, like, you, Agrid, you, and I, I would have... be so worried I was going to stuff it up. I don't have you, a single you, pack, you... by the way, Agrid. I, not a single one. Yep. Not yeah, one. If you're, like, if, even the skin packs, Agrid, I don't buy them. I deliberately, like, like I go in to buy skins and C- CIG will force them into, a, like, a package and I will actually go back and delete one out of them, buy them separately so it deliberately won't go into packs. That's how much I hate packs. Like, if you, like, if yeah, they, they, they try to force me into a pack, I will delete one of the, I will delete the item, go back, add them back in and, and delete one of them and then do two separate transactions to keep them out of packs. That's how much I hate them. Yep. Yep. I'm, I'm aware how much you hate packs. Mm-hmm. And, and, but you're right. In terms of the application, you want to make sure your CCUs are right. Yep. And if your CCU is right, mm-hmm. um, you could possibly take a CCU for a yeah. uh, for one of those packs. And, you know, if you've got one of your CCUs complete, and you know it's locked in and it's perfect and all the rest of it, you could apply it. Mm. But if you have to be aware, aware, as you apply the CCUs, you're, you're increasing your mm. the error problem you might face. Monster Avery does bring up a really good point that I, because I'm not a subscriber, but there is the subscriber in period a 10% discount too. This would be a good one to use that on too, wouldn't it? Agro at 10%. It's a nice, nice big one. So you'd get, what, 70 bucks yep. back or in the neighborhood of that. So that would be a good one to do, and see if you can put some other things, like some other CCUs, into that trend. Does it only work on one item, or is it one transaction? Because I've never um, used, but, but I'd be trying to stack it into the one transaction if you can do it under the one transaction. Again, I've I never think, used. One. Well, it used it used to be. I haven't used it since they've updated it. Mm. Um, yeah. So it used to be 
ten percent if it was the Imperator, five percent if it was the Centurion. Yeah, but it is um, one transaction. percent or a hundred, and it used to work for everything in that transaction. There you go. So you want to try and get one transaction, that, yeah, if you can get it. But that'll be a good one to use it on. Um, you know. But it was always. It also used to be limited up to say a certain amount. So it's up to. I, uh, I think it was up the to Imperator 100. used to be up to a hundred. Yeah, it was up to a hundred bucks. Yeah. Uh, and so if you had if you had a thousand dollar package, yep. then you didn't add anything else in because you already had your ten percent discount. You had your you had the maximum discount you were gonna get. Yeah. But for long story um, short, for John to answer your question very succinctly, yes, that is a good deal. That is a good deal. But, and Agrid, I think you could say yes on that too, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I think that looks like a good deal. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Especially like from a savings perspective, go nuts, John. Um but yeah, yeah. Not for everyone. Not, not, not. You know, not, not recommending everyone go out and buy this much worth of digital spaceships. But if, if knowing John enough, I would say that John has a fleet like ourselves. So I think that's fine. All right then. Um, next question. That was a very long one. Uh, do you do you want to talk any more about Todd Pappy, or do you no? You you cool with that? No, I'm quite I'm quite happy to move on. Yep. Cool. Um, All right. That's the question. As, as we said, the sky is not falling, as <laughs> that, most people seem to say. All right, we're two questions down. We don't have a lot of questions today, guys. Like I'm being serious. Uh, we've got another five questions. So yeah, um, this kind of, as you know, the streams end when the questions end. Um, if we run out of questions, we'll do IC and then wrap up. But we're currently at one, two, three, four, five, six questions left. All right. So Kinji, uh, Kinney Leslie, Kinji, yeah, Kinji Leslie. That's mostly must be a Japanese name. Kinji, Kinji Lenzi says. Are we only aware of the two planned episodes to Squadron 42 so far? Algrid, I'll let you take that one. I do believe there is supposed to be a third. There is three, yeah. Um, we only know the names of the first two, but there is there are three. And then you and I have both speculated mm -hmm. that we can see um, the Xi'an expansion, the... Tavaran expansion, well, the Banu expansion down the down line as well. They've talked about it. That's 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 mm. not, that's not speculation. That that, that that's a something they've talked about. They want to do if the game is successful, you know. Yep. Um And and you can kind of see with how they've planned it out because, um, how do we already know about the alien? There being aliens behind the Zion. How do we know about there being aliens behind the Banu? And we've even heard about there being aliens behind the Vandal. Well, the reason for that is potentially, as you play as them, yeah. there's your three episodes. One that's their, them and their stuff, and it's almost what's happening with Squadron 42 as well, and I'll explain that in a minute. But you've got one episode that is about them and their stuff, one where they're probably interacting with the humans, and then one with the race behind them, and then that opens them up to an expansion eventually, and then an alien behind them. That's if it goes and to Crazy Town and we get all these different expansions. But... Um, yeah, that, that's essentially what Squadron 42 is. It's us and our internal conflict, us and in, in a conflict with the Vandal, and then the race behind the Vandal come involved in the last one. I think I'll leave it there without spoiling things. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, the idea of a race behind the Vandal, for mm -hmm. me, goes back to 2014, talking to Aaron. And Aaron, you know, as we were talking and, and speculating and just doing the fact, his question was, what pushing the Vandal? Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, if a Vandal or based on, if we're looking at Rome and the Roman esque history, yeah, and the Vandals sacked Rome, they were being pushed by yeah. the Mongols, yeah. what pushing the Vandal in Star Citizen, yeah. And, and, as um, and we alluded, don't know that just, just for context, as Agra's alluding to, um, this whole game is based on the fall of the Roman Empire, so um. And you can go look into it, just, just like you look into law, you can look into what happened to the Romans. Literally, the people that they that pushed them out were called the Vandals. They've literally added one letter and then called them the Vandal. That's all they've done, added one extra U. Um, so, yep. yeah, it's not the most original uh, <laughs> concept, but yeah. So that that's, again, you go look at, as Agra said, uh, the Mongol... Uh, and the, not the, it wasn't the Mongols, it was, who was it? The... The um oh, the, the goals or whatever wasn't it the goals were in there as well. No, nah, um, the goals were in France. They were, I remember. They were, I don't remember. They were, done before, they were done before the others. They were done before the Vandals. I'm not a history. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But um. But um. 
Who was it? Sorry, that pushed them. That, 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 that got pushed into Rome. Who was it? The 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 Germ oh, It was Germania, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, the Ger the Germans. The German yeah. tribes were being pushed from the east. As, yeah. You know, the migration of those, and they were being pushed in. Yeah. Um, to the Roman areas, uh, some of them because of hey the, the land's better, mm. some because they were literally being pushed by other peoples. But yeah, generally, oh. generally speaking, you so had that. It would have been the Mongols slowly pushing them. So a couple of interesting um, things comes in coming in in chat now. So um, some people saying that's where we get the word vandalism from. Um, it is. There's a couple of people saying the Vandals and the Biscoths. That was from Citizen Ninja. Kilras saying yep. Goss, Jutes, etc. Well, yeah, the, Jutes, <laughs> the, um, the yeah. Angles, Pit, the Saxons. Pit, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pisspoor Pete's going on the brighter side. Mobile data algorithm isn't randomly DCing. <laughs> He's suggesting Shut you up, just, you move to the. <laughs> That's actually kind Shut of up, Pete. That's all I'll say. That's so true. yeah, like the, the Saxons, the Normans, the Jutes, yeah. not the Normans, the Saxons, the uh, Angles, the Jutes, yeah. uh, the Visigoths, the Goths, the Vandals, they're all Germanic tribes. Yeah. So so you know, they're, they're, they're essentially taking that, that human-Earth conflict and just expanding it out to be more galactic, I don't know, what, 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 or and, universal. Hmm. And here's another aspect where we see that Romanesque overarching mm. storyline history come in. The struggle between Terra and Sol. Mm. Terra is effectively Byzantium. Say that again. Terra is effectively Byzantium. By because Byzantium. I don't, I don't yeah, Byzantium. So Byzantium that. in around three hundred. Mm. Now the Emperor Constantine. Oh. moved the capital of Rome from Rome to the city of Byzantium or Constantinople. Ah, that's the name I know by it. Right, Constantinople. Right. Yeah. And one of the reasons he did that is because that city was in the perfect position to be able to move to the trouble spots on the borders. Hmm. It was, so it was it had really good connections to where they had to go. In Star Citizen, Terra has five jump points, or is it six? Wait, um, so can it, can so? So I'm just reading what someone said in chat. Citizen Scott said Istanbul. So what? Istanbul is modern day Constantinople. Is that? Yep. Man, I yep. do not know my That's history. Great. You guys know all this shit. It's quite yep. interesting to put two and two together. So, so, hmm. so the reason after the, after the fall of the Western Empire, uh, you get the Byzantine Empire, is hmm. because Constantine built. Uh, Constantinople on a small village called Byzantium and built it up into the city. Uh, when the Western Empire fell, the Byzantine Empire took over, you know, basically with the, the Roman Empire continuing and they just went back to their the original naming of the city, Byzantium. When the Turks took over, they renamed it Istanbul. Damn. So there you go. It sounds like it's had a checkered past with all the name changes, but yeah, interesting. Right, I think we'll move on to the next question with that one. But um, it is interesting to see, and I um, it kind of shows. The one thing I'll say is like how checkered the lore is. It just shows you how reality is checkered as well. So you know, there, there there's mistakes in the lore, there's mistakes in real life, so to speak. And yeah, I think one of the beauties of the lore, right? Mm. One of the things we didn't talk about the other, we we kind of touched on it. Yeah. Our law that we have for Star Citizen is from a human perspective. It's from a UAE perspective. Mm. It's from our historic. We don't have the, you know, the history of the Shiran. We don't have the history of the Banu. We don't have the history of the, the Vandal. What we get is our human, uh, our human centric mm. uh, perspective of those, of those events. Now that opens up an ease for the law team if they need to change anything because, oh, new evidence is coming. Uh, Merciless, so got, yeah. Merciless Mike on Twitch says the audio lol. Um, Agrid's actually having a power outage right now, so he's coming to us live from his mobile phone. Um, it was that or no one, or just myself, so to speak. So yeah, Agrid is on the mobile phone today. That's why his audio sounds so bad. Uh, that's and the best we could do it short the voice in the void. Yeah. yeah. No camera, because um, yeah, he's coming live to it from his mobile phone. Um, we've got and a, even if the camera was not, it'd be dark. Yeah. <laughs> it is black. 
Uh, John, John Ski has another question for $5 Super Chat. He says, the updated Vandal ships look very good. What is the largest Vandal ship do you think that CRG will sell? Do any of the Vandals tickle your fancy? They all tickle my fancy, but they're exceedingly yeah. expensive for what they are. You know, um, yeah. like you're looking at even the original price of the Vandal Scythe at 3 That's why I passed on it when it came out. It was like, this is a fighter that's not as good as the Hornet, and it's $350. Now, in perspective, I wish I brought ten of them because I could have turned around and sold them for thousands of dollars. Yep. But, um, but at the time, so if you're looking at what the van, insane. So go on. I was just saying at the you're time, what... the price was yeah. insane, and it and it was insane. Like if you look at what the scythe is, the scythe is a light fighter that was better that is conceivably better than mm. the gladius, and it's the the scythe that results in the UEE bringing out the hornet. The Hornet trumps the Scythe. But the real value so, of that package is it's the only ship that is a true Vandal ship and not a re uh, restoration from Xperia. That's why it's so yeah. valuable, because it's a Vandal ship with LTI. And that's what set the people off, and that's what all the arguments and, and kind of, not fights, yeah, but and... the community hated it, because you promised that you would never sell a alien ships with LTI, and then they did it, and people had a backlash. So the way they fixed it was they made it a huge human reproduction and that comes with LTI, but um, you cannot actually get LTI. You're not meant to be able to get on Vandal ships, and that Scythe package is the rarest of the rare, and it'll never... I, I do think eventually they'll get around to selling the Vandal, the, the Scythe, but it'll be an Asperia Scythe. We, um, will, we will see an Asperia Scythe. And Agra's got two of them, and he better give me one. Um, <laughs> that's, not, that's what I always say to him. No, he's got two. Um, they're in packs, though, so it's very hard for him to pronounce. Um, yep. What was the other Stuck one? Um... What was the other? Uh, there were other Vandal ships in there as well, like the Blade. What else were we sent over the years? The Blade. The Blade came in. The Blade came in really, uh, mm. really late. Actually, it was the last of the, the Vandal ships we had. So we had the yeah. Scythe, the Glaive, and then the Blade. Yeah. Uh, and the Blade is basically mm. the light fighter, which the Gladius is better than. Yep. Um. The mm. Hornet is better than the, than the Scythe, and then the Glaive mm. is better than the Hornet. And then we mm. get the F8, which is better than the yeah. Glaive, and then there's a, another ship that's kind of on par or better than the yeah. F8. And then so you get this, you get this almost um, mm. arms race between the Vandal and humans mm. over the ages as they keep up in the ante. Conceivably, um, depending on how well this game goes, you know, say we eventually do get a Zion expansion and a Banner expansion, we may even, in fact, eventually get a vandal one as well now not saying that that's 100 percent the case but we may eventually get one and i think that to john's question is where you'd see a lot more vandal ships coming. yeah because it'll be the same well, I... same on the zion it'll be same on the banu like when they're making an expansion based on those races you would start to see most of their ships because conceivably most of their ships will only operate in their system and, and... Just, just to clarify, like we were talking mm. three expansions for Star Citizen. When we're talking the yeah. expansions of race, and that's beyond the story of Squadron 42. So there are three chapters to Squadron 42, as I understand it. We know of two. Yeah. We know the names of two. The third one, we don't know. Yeah. After that, after Squadron 42's story concludes, then we see yeah. there could be an expansion for enabling us to play a Tavaran or a Banu or Xi'an. And it's when we get those expansions where I could see all those ships that we've got for those races, which may just be shells that we can't control or take over or whatever, that's when we'll see them come into the versus player-ownable, uh, flyable, etc., etc., etc. So, yeah. Now... That's, that, that's moving closer to the realms of speculation at that point. Just to, just to you show you lot. how planned out this is, though, right? Like, just to show you how conceivable this all is. A lot of these images are really, really old now, right? And I'm talking back, like, back to 2013, 2014 type of thing. But there, are, when was this posted? This was posted in February 23rd, 2014, right? This is just an imager, right? So yeah. this is older than that, right? But... Um, this is this is actually literally concept art of the Vandal ships um, next to concepts of the Bengal and stuff like that. So this is like a whole... And, and I can't... Oh, I wonder if I can actually open this and make it... 
Can I make it full screen? Yes, I can. There we go. So you can actually, like, we're getting down to M50 and Merlin's down here. Gladiators, Avengers, Hornets, Cutlets, Scythe. So that's the Scythe all the way down here. So this is just a scaling image. And if you go, if you go looking, you can start to see there is a lot of older Vandal ships. And over the years, people have made videos and all that. So there's lots of different thumbnails. This one here, you can even see older uh, Zion ships and stuff like that. So the entire styles have changed. But the point is, it's all been planned. It's all been planned from the beginning. So at some point, we will see these ships from the Vandal in the episodes of Squadron. But it's conceivable that we'll see more of these ships or more of them in their own story arc you know, when you essentially get the players about, if that is eventually where it goes. And Agra, you even theorized that they may do a Tavarum prequel at one point, which I think would be oh, really look. cool. Yeah. I, I, I think if, it, if you're going down the line of playable alien races, the Tavarum mm. might are the easiest to do in terms of law and everything else, because mm. as UAE, as Tavarum living in the UAE, you wouldn't need to relearn mm. the law because you're still getting it from the UE perspective. Yeah. And the storyline would be, okay, I'm mm. Tavaran. I now want to find out about my culture. Mm. But Tavaran in law basically purged their culture. They they wiped mm. everything out after they were yeah. defeated. And so now it's almost being an archaeologist and digging up and finding out where does it go and what branches you've got. And we've already seen law there are two branches. Well, the interesting the thing mega... is, just like any argument or anything like that, there's two sides to every story. So you've got this human perspective, Agri, like you were talking about before, and all of a sudden yeah. you get this Tavaran one, and as soon as you have that Tavaran perspective, you all of a sudden will go, oh, it's not like what the humans said, and it's not like what the Tavaran said, but it's weirdly, strangely, this thing in the middle. So it will change and... everyone's perspective on how things went down, and I think that's kind of cool. And we've cool. already got hints to that mm. in the law currently. So there's that the story mm. we talked about in the episode, the letter home. Mm. We've got a Tavaran who goes to Branner, which was a, a, a Tavaran enclave where they're saying, we are full on Tavaran, mm. down with the humans. And then you've got and this guy leaves the UE and goes mm. there and he ends up coming back to the UE, back home because they were too... He came to a conclusion that mm. you're not doing Rajora. You're, you're not following the faith. You've, you've twisted and maligned it into this hatred and vitriol. Mm. And if, so the law is somewhere in between for, for the Tavaran, yeah. and you've got Tavaran stuck with that. If you want to, um, if you want to know more about that, uh, Paul, Aragon, and myself, this week's episode was about the law, so that, that'll be on the YouTube channel. I just want to talk about this real quick before we get rid of it, Aragon, the, yep. th these images. But that, just to give an example of how things have changed as well, this king uh, kingship originally was just going to be an exterior ship, so you'd, you'd kind of see it and kind of take in its breath. But we now know they've gone and done internals on it, right? So that's, a, mm. again, another changing of things. And again, I, I, I'd expect Agrid that, that they've changed the style of this somewhat as well. Like um, this driller, right? Yeah. That changed quite a bit, didn't it? There's actually a video out there that we can go find if, if, if people are really interested, um, where they released a shot of this thing in game. And it's not the same as it is in this, is in this concept image. They all got updated, right? So I can yep. only assume this behemoth has been updated as well. Right. Yeah. So, and so, so just again, planned, but plans change and upgrade and get better. Um, real quick, first time chatter. Um, before you talk, Agrid, sorry. Uh, Tana, yeah, Tana yeah, Little yeah. says, or is it Tanny Nine says, is it, will this stream be on YouTube? Yes, it will be. It'll be on YouTube yeah. after it ends. You can go watch it straight away. Right. Agrid, sorry. But when you look at the uh, Vandal ships in mm. law, the Vandal. Uh, basically destroy their ship. They, they self-destruct before they're captured. They're in danger of being caught. They, yeah. they blow up. So that was how CIG was originally getting around that idea of we don't need to be internal because the second they're in danger, they blow up. Yeah. In law, there is a kind of... The, originally, they said it was a, a kingship that kind mm. of re-pulled that back to a smaller carrier mm. uh, that had a critical failure in its engines and basically the UE was able to capture it before they destroyed it, which is where the site that was sold came mm. from. So let me just, it's also... just let me point this out real quick, Agar, while I've got it up. So that is the javelin that's actually smaller than the Idris, and that's the old Idris before it went up in size. 
So you can see how things are, that's how old this image and how things have changed because we all know the javelin's twice the size of the Idris. So the, these have all increased. So you've got to remember that's how old this image we're looking at, 20, 20, literally 2013. So yeah, sorry, Agra, go ahead. Yep. So, so you've got that aspect of, of, of the wave layer mm. and you've also got, um, I think where I was going with that, the thought process. Um, so vandal ships were hard to get. Mm. Uh, we do know they changed that, and I've lost the train of thought. And I'm sorry, I've, I've lost it. I can't. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get it back. I'll get it back. But the I flow um, is gone. I've can't quite move that over with how I've got it set up. Hang on, I need to figure a way how to get this over. Because I just realised you got like anyone watching the video can't actually. Just gonna, nope. I just want to move everyone. No, yes. But anyway, oh, this is blocked. All right, hang on. Yeah. There we go, right? So I'll move it over to the left. But yeah, so that kind of shows you. Right, let's go to the next question. Yeah. Right, I probably should start picking some of these off because I've been thinking them up. All right, Citizen Ninja says, question, do you think that the previous announced vehicle nearing completion could be the G12 coming at Stella Fortuna? Agrid? Your thoughts on usual, that? usual answer, never say never. I would say based on what I've been hearing, it's probably the Pulse. Um, but, um, which is the Mirai Pulse uh, bike. But um, I did say, what did it say? Did it say announced? Let me reread re 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 his question. He says, previously announced people. Well, yeah, then yeah, it's going to be an announced one, can't it? So that would either be the Ranger or the G12. Yeah, probably. So... Does any of the ships they or vehicles they put up on the yellow curtain or behind the yellow curtain? Um, well, the pulse. Yeah, is, in which case, it could. The pulse is the pulse on, was there. Yeah, but it's not announced. The G, that's not announced. That that because that yep. announced would have a name with it. Um, uh, the G twelve wasn't in that curtain, so if you were arguing that line, you could yep. say no. But mm -hmm. it would mean that the. But we know the G twelve uh, because we know the name. So. Yep. But we also know there was an Ursa behind the yellow curtain, uh, which we assume is a, is a medical. Mm -hmm. So, never say never, but yeah, it seems, seems reasonable. That's interesting. There's actually a, a thing here for the G12. It says building, implementing, and balancing the Origins wheeled ground vehicle G12 in gameplay here in vehicle, but there is nothing. So, I'll just get over it. There's absolutely nothing on here. So it, it, it's not been planned. It's not been laid out. So there's no plans to bring it. Like, I don't know else to take that. Um, it's like it's been put on there to, to, for when eventually it goes on, but it doesn't look like it's got any time or any work to work on. Mm. Uh, 11 weeks. Um, so either, all that's already passed and they've got more work to do on it, but, or, or it's been done and they're just waiting. But yeah, um, the pulse is not going to be on there, but um and that wasn't announced. What's the other one? The Ranger. The Ranger. Ranger's not on there at all. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'd uh, probably I... lean towards G12. Uh, if it's and between I... the Ranger. Yeah. Is there any other vehicles out there besides the Ranger and the G12 that, um, that, that's, been well, well, that, that that's been announced? That's been announced. Chad, I'll put that out to you because, you know, crowdsource this shit. But I, I G12 and Ranger, the only two I can... I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't think of a small uh, a vehicle that we've been announced or sold that we haven't heard or seen. Uh, uh, bar variants of vehicles that they've kind of hinted at. But again, I like I've, I've mentioned the Ursa medical or Ursa variant. Mm -hmm. Now they've talked. They've hinted at it. They've given a, an Ursa behind a yellow curtain. But, but I doubt we see anything but on but it's the an, tracker. But it's an announced ship. He says. I. I... Yeah. I didn't actually, yeah. It says it's an announced ship. Did you, uh, where was that actually stated? Uh, it was by Citizen Scott, I believe. Previously announced vehicle nearing completion. Uh, that would have to be the roadmap. The, the roadmap roundup. Let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Uh, it's not live. It's not live. It's not live. Nope. Not there. Uh, was it in the... No, monthly report. Nope, 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 nope. I'm going to try and find where it's going. Citizen Scott, where was it? 
Don't give me eyeballs. Tell me where it was, says the Scott. You hold us all in suspense. Um... I'll just do the pop music while we wait. Roadmap Roundup, 2020, uh, February. Right. So it's more than likely this one. Announced. Mm -hmm. If I look for the word announced. Nope. Uh... Is there announced? Oh. No. No. Justin Scott, where is it? No, he's just giving me eyeballs. He, he, he likes having us holding everyone in suspense. I don't know where it is, so I don't know where he exactly got it from. I was looking for context, but yeah. But long story short, I think we'll leave it there. Oh, no, he did link it. Hang on. He did link it. He just linked it on... He's tricking me. I was looking on looking on uh, YouTube, because he's on there, and then he linked it on Twitch. Sneaky bugger. All right, Stars is a monthly report. Uh... Uh, a previously announced vehicle completed its LOD phase with the team also looking at paints through January. Okay. So that means it's getting... Okay, that's kind of finalizing completion. Um, a previously announced vehicle. In some areas, we already made it through the final content and we hope to have any hands off a couple of weeks before moving on to additional promised content work to start paint. Yeah. Um, we know the range is a thing, though, because we saw the Ranger in background shots mm -hmm. as well. I haven't seen anything from the G12, Agrid, have you? I haven't, and I had heard ages ago that one of the things they want to do with all the vehicles is actually bring them down to the same metric, which mm -hmm. meant the width of the vehicles was all going to be the same, which that would impact on the G12 because they had a wider base mm -hmm. than the others, which gave the stability. Mm. But it also limited which ships it could be stored in. Yeah, I, I don't think um, there's anything that points to either of them is what I'm trying to you know. I tend mm. to look at these and go, what which one is it is and and sorry if you're getting annoyed by how hung up I am on this, but I'm looking for evidence that points to one or the other, and there is no clear evidence that points to one or the other. Sometimes there is, yeah. right? Sometimes you go, Oh, they've been working on a whole bunch of origin ships, so it would be the G twelve. Um, but this is Tumbrel, um, and most of the Tumbrel stuff stuff is that stuff that falls in between the gaps like if you look at every tumble thing that came out it's a gap filler right so you've had the storm you've had all the others um working in january someone working you know that the, they say the team um with the team also working on paints through january so i don't know i lean more ranger knowing that it we've seen it in shots previously um just because of that but there's no reason it can't be g12 so yeah, I, Agra, I think you'd kind of agree with me. It could be one or the other at this point. There's no... Yeah, yeah. six of one, half a dozen of another. Yeah, so I think we'll just... Go, leave it goes, back to, goes back to my initial statement. Never yeah. say never. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so I can, I can see, Susan Scott, you've probably doing a bit, been, been doing a little bit of um, detective work there yourself trying to figure it out. But yeah, I think I think you've probably come to the same conclusion. Um, it's one or the other. Right. Uh... Yeah. Mopar225 says, I have heard that there are water planets, moons in Star Citizen. So I was wondering, is there any, is there going to be any alien fish in the game? I reckon that is a high yes. chance. Uh, don't we already have some alien fishing game? We, we have little, in our fish tank? We have little goldfish that swim around already in the fish tanks, but I reckon you'll get a whole, okay. whole manner of oh, yeah. creatures. Like, we, we are literally, you think about Squadron 42 as a whole, they're not really needed for that. There might be a one-off yeah. creature or something in it, but they're not really needed. Um, but, but as you move into a multiplayer game, Flora and Fauna are going to be one of the biggest expansions to this game of things that we have not seen, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, even if you look at the fish for the fish tank, I think most of those are alien. I don't think any of them are actually mm. fish from Earth. Um, so they're the fish from a fish tank. We can't mm. actually load them into a game at the moment, but mm. we used to be able to. Mm. So I think that answers the question, yes. Um, so yes, there are water worlds. Mm. Yes, there will be alien ship uh, fish. Mm. Will there be fishing? That's probably another question. We'll, we'll, we'll be fishing. I start thinking of all the different uh, ways you could have, like someone's mentioned uh, alien turtles and stuff like that, like the Zion, yep. but uh, the Zion that weird that they love to eat turtles, they're like a delicacy. 
you know <laughs> or or are they totally offended that we don't eat them or or you know like all the different cultural changes they can chuck in there just to throw us off you know as a differentiator i think that's very yeah. interesting where, where the the law team can kind of go with that you know like um or, you know like 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 you've seen episodes of star trek like the one i'm thinking of is the one in enterprise where they where that guy gets they get really offended because he eats in front of them like it's you don't eat in public in, in their race and so they get he didn't even know what he'd done but he like he took a i think he drank a glass of water or ate something they got really offended it was really quite funny and he didn't know I why the, they were offended and it was quite funny i even like the idea of, of i think of galaxy quest when they're, they're having the meals served mm. to the characters based on their their race mm. and you know, you get that type of aspect of the different foods and yeah. styles as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of cool little nuances. And, and you can tell that, 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 like, having followed this game as long as we have, as, as I know you guys have, they've already got so many tips of hats to every single, like, TIE Fighters, the, the, the whole nine yards. So I, I think when it comes to stories like that, we'll get every trope that you can possibly imagine. And I'm, and I'm all for it, Algar, as I know you are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Going to an alien world and pulling out the fishing rod. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then getting in trouble for it as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You ate our god. Mm. You <laughs> ate our leader, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big Bob was worth the third. You swallowed him whole. Right. Um, <laughs> and Dorius Gibbon says, no shave till 3, 2.3 or 4.0. Uh, no, no shave until... So, so basically, I've got a, a thing coming shaving and i'm just waiting for it to be delivered and i don't shave that often as you can probably imagine uh so i want to use it before it before i shave but it is uh, there's a few people in my real life that are like i haven't shaved because i did buy like a new razor thing at christmas and i and uh, but i'm now waiting for a few accessories to arrive so i can probably but yeah hopefully by next week i'll be all driven um kinji lenzi asks the second question do you expect combat as a career to be too expensive alone to live in the verse in other words having to have non-combat ways to make money will be required or can we get by well i think you're going to be flush for cash yeah um the the thing that is really clear that is not in the game right now is escorting like all these people that are complaining about piracy none of them have escorts none and it's been in the documentation since like day dot the, the, the core pillar of gameplay and Agatha and I have talked about this at length the last thing we really need is for pirates to be able to have scanning so they can find people to hunt them once that comes in you're going to need escorts like it's just it's just going to be a thing because they can then literally find you anywhere right now it, like like how people get really pissed off about piracy they're finding you in the dark like, and, and if you've watched any, like, if you've watched Moist Noodle or Agent Letty or any of the people that do piracy, uh, you know, Dark Law, all those people, they're doing it in the dark. And they're the ones that are going out of their way to find that gameplay, and you get savagely annoyed when they actually happen to find you. Well, it's about to dial up to 11, because if they can find you with scanning, you are going to start buying escorts. It's going to fundamentally change the game to what they actually have intended it to be since the beginning. And it won't be until scanning comes in. You you just watch when scanning comes in, the whole game is going to do this backflip and everybody's going to be moving around with escorts. So you'll find, uh, Kinji, that the whole game's going to change once scanning comes in. You, you, that's the last piece that's meaning, the ability to find people. So we've kind of got like two sides of the triangle and we can't get that last bit of the triangle of the the core foundation of the entire game is built around, you know, I cover you, um, pirates try and come and steal your shit. I try and hunt them. You, you know, you, you've got to get, so you got the, you know, piracy, escorting and combat. They, uh, well, sorry, uh, cargo escorting and piracy are the three sides of this core triangle. How else would you put that? No, that sounds, that sounds um, fairly well. But in talking about uh, yeah. were you able to survive as a combat mm. person, it actually did make me think of a point that I lost. Yeah. Oh. When we were talking about Duel. All right. And that well, was well, the you go ahead. That the, it was that that the generation tech that we mm. have has actually been back engineered from Vanduul tech. 
So the Ibram sphere actually yep. is humans taking Vandal tech mm. and then turning it to their own thing. And so that's a few different ones too, like to the Tavaran shields, and there's a whole bunch of others too, like that that have all been reverse engineered. Yeah. Yep. But the new, mm. the new one that 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 generation tech, the the yep. the taking the imprint and that that's mm. engineered Vandal tech, and they brought it in only recently. It's, it's new tech. Yep. That is stuff. The Xi'an don't have the stuff that the mm. Vandal don't have. Mm. The Vandal have it, or a mm. form of it, and mm. we've got it. Yeah. Um, and that raises the whole question of, am I a real person? Mm. We've seen that pop up in the lore if I'm regenerated. Yeah. Um, mm. What do the Van? What do the Xi'an think of it? What do the Vandal think of it? Yeah. Um, first so, time, first time chatter on Twitch. Uh, Dex Trenchcoat says, "Yep, escorts are already essential." And when multi crew kicks in, that's a great way to get new folks into it. Here, I pay you a flat fee of X to take this trip with me. Absolutely, is is, is how it's going to happen. And you, like, what they are fundamentally wanting, right? If you kind of sit back and try to watch it, the whole game as a whole, is you start the game on yourself, and then they're going to ease you into doing missions with other people, and eventually you'll do you, you you may become friends with some of those people, and then start working together on the multi crew ships. And if that doesn't happen, you'll probably already be in an org with people from the get-go, right? This game is clearly, very, very oh. clearly wanting multi-crew. It is so loud, it is not funny, right? And yeah. anyone that thinks, like, what we've heard people say the highest form of skill in this game is flying a single-seat fighter. That is bullshit. Oh. Yeah. I call bullshit straight off the bat when I heard that and, and turned said video off, Right? Um, but, but, but anyone will tell you if you've ever played a game, let's look at world of Warcraft, you start on your solo experience, then they dial it up a level and you go into heroic dungeons and you're working in a group of, what is it? Five or four or five. And then they turn it up again into raids. And then you're working in 10 to 25 people progression. It's exactly the same yep. in this game alone, one or two people, three or four people, five or six people the, before you know it, you're in a javelin with 80 people, right? That, that is yep. literally and, what and, and they're trying was... to do. And that was something that was planned. The Javelin yep. and the Idris were planned for that raid group yep. activity. Yep. Now, just off the cuff, raid group activity for yep. an org, go yep. fight the Vandal. Yep. You know, that, that's the bare PvE version of mm -hmm. the multi-crew raid. Yep. Could there be PvP versus PvP? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, your, your org versus another org? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. But, um, I think the the, board, the bare bones is something like go repel a vandal raid. Mm. Um, meet triple X. Meet triple X. Thank you for the tier one sub on Twitch. Appreciate it. Um, Hook also says something really interesting. He says you um, we need NPC escorts. Absolutely, that's going to help change the game as well. But again, certain systems have got to be in place before you build AI. Um, that's why they're so derpy at the moment. But we're getting there, yep. we're getting there, you know, it's some of its parts game, you know, you get little bits coming in here and there and, you know, uh, I don't have to say this to you guys, you, we've seen progress, just keep, as long as they keep moving forward, I'm happy with what I'm seeing, so, you know, give it time, um, and with the changes we're seeing in AI in real life, I have no doubt some, a lot of you have virtual girlfriends real soon in game, no, I'm just kidding, but you get what I'm going, like, like, like AI is going to be so different, uh, in games in the next couple of years than what it is now like we're already seeing fundamental changes so uh, i have no doubt ai is going to get like be phenomenal in this game at some point so yeah don't don't, don't you worry about that uh next question agrid you, you good to move on yeah yeah i'm good to move on uh jack cop says i know you don't normally recommend packs but the company pack seems to have a lot of ships that you guys lend, uh, tend to recommend orion reclaimer crucible etc what do you guys think um, I think it kind of comes back to our kind of general thing, Aaron, wouldn't you say? is like, if a pack works for you and you know its limitations and, and what you're getting yourself in for, then yeah, go for it. And as long as that saving is there, go nuts. Now, there was two packs specifically, Aaron. One had 21% and the one had 18%. And I wish yep. I had the image and I know it came from Lemming and I just don't know where it is. Lemming, if you're out there, I know you're, you're not. Like, oh, he's online, he's online. Um, wait, I might message him real quick. Oh. The, 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 a classic example is we have done a Fix My Fleet where the pack we chose was an, was an origin pack. Mm. 
because the person really wanted the 890 yeah. with LTI. And they had an 890 without it. And by getting the Origin pack, they were actually able to get everything they wanted mm. and to get their 890 with LTI. Now, and it didn't cost them the world. It did, they were having to put extra in. Mm. So every pack in, in certain circumstances can be perfect for you. Yeah, and 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 again, getting the right one. Again, any only the only times though there were two instances ever that's happened, and in both circumstances it was where the person had insane expenditure of chips, right? Um, but generally, packs are not a good idea. Um, but that 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 did fix those two situations. So yes, there is a situation for packs, but it's only for the top end of town. And I can't rec- stress enough that if you're going into this game, try try and stay out of packs, like. You don't need to spend no. that much money, you know. Like, I'll, it, it, I'll go. I'll go a step yeah. further. Mm. Try and stay out of fleets. Yep, <laughs> yeah, yeah, need, yeah. Yep, that's you it. You don't need to have every ship yeah. under the sun. You yeah. don't need to have yeah. multiple javelins or make, multiple idrises or make, multiple make whatever. Friends. There are so many people out there. Agrid's one of them. He's got three bloody javelins, yeah. and he doesn't have enough friends to fill one javelin, let alone three. So he's going to be making lots of friends. He's taking applications, by the way. If you want to, if you want to. <laughs> Send a message on Discord. I want to be your rich and how good. Um, you know, take a photo. Yeah, that, actually, that'll be a good spam for Agron. Take a photo of yourself in a red shirt. Send Agron and tell him you want to be his red shirt. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, you, you know the idea of a red shirt is with the NPC so that the yeah. players would actually have their lives. Not that the players were the red shirts. I know you keep trying to malign my character mm. by saying, I just want to kill people, but no. <laughs> All right, so Lemmings Lemmings responded is also in Twitch. So Lemming, we were talking. Someone was talking about packs, and they brought up the um, what was the one in the question? It was the the company pack, and company I was pack. trying to remember. There was two packs specifically, and I remember you had the image you sent me. Oh God, it would have been twelve two years ago at this point. Um, that has the percentages of all the different ones of packs, and so I was just going to bring it up and sh- stream and show people very quickly, though it's an old image. What are the best packs for value? Uh, that image that you had and i and i just remember you sent it to me and i obviously i didn't save it so i, I can't remember where it is but yeah if you've got a copy of the lemming send it through and uh we'll, we'll bring it up in a minute you'll send it through to me right uh next question we are up to that was jock cop so we're now up to monster yep. avery who says question takes on the updates to ivacardi nda allowed to discuss thing but not post photos video if i'm reading correctly Agra, are you allowed to talk about shit yet or not? Um, I still prefer not to. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> From the horse's mouth. But yeah, again, I, it, 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 see what happens. Maybe it's a bit of a laxing of the rules. I haven't heard anything. So, Monster Abbey, if you've heard anything, yep. uh, feel free to link it through and I'll, uh, I'll show it. Yep. Right. I haven't heard anything. I haven't checked, I haven't checked the, the Evercardi updated rules or anything of that, but I just assume. Mm-hmm. We're under NDA, the NDA yeah. still applies. And it was, don't talk about it, don't take pictures of it. Actually, I think you could mm. talk about it in certain circumstances, but certainly with no videos and stuff. And part of the reason was stuff that was in the Avocati was stuff mm. that may not make it into game. It was literally testing it. Mm. And if you talked about it and then it wasn't there, people have a hissy fit. All right, so, so now you can see what's up on screen, Agrid. So you want to move on a little bit. Yep. Um, we'll come back to it, though. Um, so this is uh, literally an Excel sheet image taken directly from Lemming. Thank you very much, Lemming, for providing this. Um, and you can clearly see percentage savings, right? So the Convoy pack, it has 16 ships in it, though. 21, uh, 21% saving, you know? So, and then you, he's obviously rated this based on... Uh, uh, Lemming, I'll let you speak for yourself here, but it looks like you're basing it on savage kind of intertwined with the overall price, unless I'm saying that, because it's not exactly in order. So you can obviously see the escort pack and the company pack are high up there in savings as well. So yeah, based on on this, the company pack, as you're, to, to, to kind of answer your question, I, I think it was Copjock that answered that question, so I have to go back and double check. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was Copjock. Uh, Jock Cop, I got it backwards. Yeah, I can I could say that's a pretty good pack. How good would you say, the, the company pack? This is an older one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Well, even even if you look at that, mm. like I said, the bare minimum I look for if I'm looking at the pricing of a pack is a ten percent discount. Yeah. So anything below ten percent, 
I, I would, you know, I'd almost be writing off of a valuable pack. Yeah. Now, every pack and everything you buy, mm. there will be something where it, it speaks to you and says, this has everything I want. Mm. And it might only get you 5%, but if it's got mm. everything you want and you don't need to do anything, for you, it might be the perfect pack. But generally, if I'm looking for value in packs, mm. to counter that, the, the difficulties of X, Y, and Z, or being locked in, or this, that you mm. want as big a saving as you can get. And that, for me, is what I look for, you know, so... Well, one of the things I look for, I should say. Yeah. So that's a, a rough little guy that'll kind of help you out. And, and all he's done is done the math. So, yeah, again, a lot of this is yeah, math. So, oh, uh, go ahead. I, I, I just didn't want to claim responsibility for this. This is not mine. Oh, it's um, not? So okay. I, no, I, I got this somewhere off of Reddit, I believe. Reddit? Um, Red, did you say Reddit? Yeah. You're very, yeah, Reddit. You're very distant today. It's like It sounds like you're standing back from your phone talking like this. Is it sitting better? Uh... No. Okay, and I don't know. And what my camera just uh, overheated. That's nice of it. That's right. I'll turn the fan on. Today is a day of technical difficulties. Oh, it is. That's right. It's back. I'm back on. Go ahead, Lemming. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So I have all of the packs from the past also mm -hmm. in the spreadsheet. I just have them filtered out in that view. Yep. Um. So I believe that that's up to date with the mm -hmm. I price increases, but it may not be. I may have to go and update some mm -hmm. stuff like the Orion and stuff like that. But as far as I know, that's up to date. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna give my my camera thirty seconds to cool before I try to turn it back on this time because it's turn the fan on. Turn did, the fan I, on. I did turn the fan on, but it, usually it's enough to kick in straight away, but it wasn't enough to kick in. So. We'll have no video for a little bit until I turn this back on. Right. Um, yeah, so um, I can also talk about some of the Evo stuff that's came out in the past couple of days. Well, that's what I was about. Um, that's literally what I was about to move on okay. to because uh, someone linked to me that. So, yeah, go ahead. Go not slimy. Yeah, so the initial announcement was that the patch notes were going to be public. Mm -hmm. And then it was clarified by Xylo. Uh, that EVOs can talk about experiences in the patch. However, they can't show any video or pictures or images. There you go. So we're less, we're more free. Fly and be free. Uh, 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 um, Waffles done a super chat that says, is, is there a link to where I can download this lemming? Do you have a, a link to where he can find out about that? Or should I just link it to him? Directly. So, yes, I can share the link out because again, it's not mine. Yeah. Um. The uh, the problem is is that you have to make a copy of it and maintain it yourself. Yeah. Because I'm not going to share an editable link. Yeah. Of mine and the prices will get out of date. Yep. So. Yeah. Um. If I'm, you reach out to me, I will give you a link to it, but yep. it's a pain to keep up to date. Yeah. And I've I've just linked this image directly to Waffle. So there you go. Yeah, yep. Thank you for the super chat uh, of two pound, or is that British pound? No, yeah. euro. Yes, yeah, two pound. All right, cool. Right, I hope... two pound to me. Yeah. All right. Um, as for the Evo stuff, um, yeah, I, I, this has been a long time coming. Let's be honest. There's the, so many people just leaked the patch notes. I mean, they've been leaking patch notes for five, six years at this point. Yep. So it's kind of beyond a joke. Like, just do it anyway. Like, it, it's literally you put it out there, and within 10 minutes, it, it's out anyway. So what's the point? Might as well just make it public. I, I you know, no big deal. It just shows, uh, if anything, doesn't it just kind of help us to know what's going on? So it's a bit, yep. it's like they're just I, informing I, us, and it doesn't, we don't see it, we don't hear it. It's like, oh, it's good to see this progress, though. You know, like, that's awesome. Yeah. Know? So, I don't know. what. Like, I don't yep. know. There's nothing... Is there any, ever been really anything that's, like, dirty laundry in this stuff? Like, oh, it's a bit buggy at the moment. That's it. And then, you know, yeah, cool. You guys deal with the bugs. And so when we get to it, it's fine or better, you know, and that's kind of what happens every time. It hasn't and, changed. And I've got to say, sometimes the, oof, the, those, those early patches, they are really mm. uh, interesting. Yeah. That's what it is. That, so, that, that, that is what testing is. And that's what so you're the, for. Go ahead, Lenny. So the one thing that is negative in this, I believe, mm. is that SIG isn't going to be able to do widespread tests 
So, like, say that there's a vet, say that there's new, like a new event that's six months out. Yeah. Um, and they don't want to get people's hopes up for the event that may or may not actually make it into production. Yeah. So they may not be able to show it to Evos now to get feedback on it Mm. because it's just going to be public. So that's the only concern that I have. And that, and that was one of the reasons why Evos wouldn't talk about stuff and why the patches were secret is because stuff that may have appeared in Evo may not have been stuff that was going to make it in-game, but didn't make it in-game. And so you didn't want to talk about it in case it didn't make it. So the second we're publishing the patch notes mm. and we can talk about the experiences, we could talk about something that's not actually going to make it in-game, but it fails. <laughs> and so people get their hopes up and have them dashed. Praying on saying so, in Twitch chat, maybe this is pre attempts at a new, even more secret pre Evo group, you know? <laughs> well, we've kind of seen that recently with the EPTU, haven't we? Like the EPTU has kind of like made the old PTU kind of redundant. They they basically made yeah. that to get what they wanted and re- separate it from the subscriptions and all that. It's kind of interesting how they're so, doing that. Um, real quick, um, and- X Meet, Triple X uh, Meet. Triple X, thank you for the basic membership on YouTube. Go, go ahead, uh, whoever. Oh, I saw that as meat. So, us I hope that this ushers back something that actually predates me being a backer, and that's the straight groups. I hope that the straight groups come back mm. and to a very small group of, of backers at a time, only getting a certain patch. And then being able to test in very small groups. Your, your connection, Lemming, is really bad today. I don't know why, but it is okay. really, then really bad. Go. Yeah, I was going to mm. say, I, I'm just going to have to limit your speak because it's like Algrid's bad enough today, but with the two of you, it's just so noticeable that, yeah, I don't know what it is. The The audio is really <laughs> dropped right. a, 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 a quite a lot today uh, across the board. Mm. Right, but thank you for your uh, your input, Lemming, and I look forward to you getting back in. And probably, we ne- probably need to look at getting you a better mic down the road as well. Um, all right, uh, who's up next? We have Citizen Scott says questions. Squadron Forty Two uh, was meant to tie in with the PU by giving citizenship access to the F Eight C, etc. Now that it's three chapters, how will that work? What will the, be the rewards after chapter one? or have to wait to all three. No, I think the rewards will still be the same for episode one, and I reckon they'll probably add other yeah. rewards, and I don't think it has changed from Citizenship. I don't think anything's changed as, uh, at all. Um, I just yeah. think you'll get new things in the in the following chapters. You reckon that's the same same case again, Agrid? I, I think there's a good chance of it, although the question on citizenship could go up in the air. Um, for those who go and follow the link to the Day Paddock interview, uh, with Paul and I, um, when we were talking citizenship, because in law, if you were a criminal, you couldn't be a citizen. And so if you've ever been in jail on the prison, when you leave, it doesn't say citizen, you're welcome. It says civilian. Mm. Um, because being a criminal means you lose that citizenship. And Dave Haddock was saying that's one of the areas they're still not sure how they're going to work that. Um, I do know that cause um, the, the Tavaran senator, while he has criminal links, he is not considered to have been a criminal. So he does have his citizenship. Mm. But that's a whole that's a whole question that's kind of a bit nebulous in terms of how they'll end up applying it. But the original idea was civilians could have run businesses in the system. And run for local office, but they couldn't go for a higher office or run multi-system corporations and stuff. So, yeah, uh, how that works out is yet to be seen. But hmm. something of concern for you, Algrid. It's now been an hour and a yep. half, and the power's still not back on. I'm kind of yep. surprised it, they're going the to leave. The light still off. They're going to leave all of uh, Sydney in the a, dark. It, it's a little lighter here. Yep. Um, so it's not quite as dark and black. Mm. The dawn is starting to, you know, the dawn light is coming through. So, mm. but yes, it just might be. 
I'd, I'd, I'd assume it. I'd, I'd assume it'd have to be back on by seven a.m. But I guess we. I would hope. I would hope so. Um, like I don't know what time it went out, mm. but I know I had an outage early last night. I had an outage mm. when I turn, tried to turn on the lights this morning. It was um, interesting. Um, I checked the points. I checked the circuit board. So, yeah. Hmm. Alas, beyond my control. Okay, uh, Dark, Darth Polben says, do you think they might purge more CCUs, ruin chains? Um, I don't think they really go out of the way to ruin them. I think what they've been doing is essentially lowering the savings because that means they make more money. Hmm. So um, I think they're making it better for themselves. I don't think they're ruining Agri, would you kind of yeah. agree with that? They're, that they're, yeah. they're just changing, changing the savings, essentially. They're not ruining Yeah. Them. The only CCUs they ever purged were the $0 CCUs. Yeah. I don't know of any other. I can't. Any CCUs you paid cash for, yeah. they stand. But there was a reason why they did that, and that's because so many people had just brought, and when I say brought, you obviously didn't because they were $0, but they had literally had millions upon millions of them in buyback. And they had to yeah. hold on to all those, and it was just like it was becoming cost prohibitive because they had to hold that information. And so, by purging the real big offender ones, they just saved millions of megabytes or terabytes or whatever it in was storage. In, in storage fees. So that's why they did it because people, like always, someone ruins it for everyone abuse else. The system. They, they, yeah, they abused the system, and so they they had to take action. So you can. Like we can blame ourselves for that, so to speak, you know. Um, yep. Hmm. It's why why LTI is a thing, even though CIG have constantly said LTI hmm. is not a thing. There, there are why still is some... LTI thing in the market because everyone clamors for LTI. There is still a couple of um, CCUs that survived the purge. Zero dollar ones. I'm talking about here. There's still a couple that yep. survived. I've got a couple in my boat, my buyback, yeah. and things like that, um, and on my account. But it was just the really notorious ones that they deleted. So they obviously went, all right, these yep. ones are huge, and they just deleted those ones. I've so, got some in my account. They're useless, but yep. there's still some in my account. Yep. Mine too. Uh, Kinji Lensley, oh, a third question. Maybe that should be a question. No, that, that should not be a question. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, the Rijack says, with the Idris testing ramping up, do you think that we may see them walking back the Squadron 42 PU release projection like they did with the F8C. Wait, walking back. But is so, it, oh, will they make the address available before Squadron 42? No, because they won't, like, they, they've guarded the story of Squadron 42 so tightly to their chest, there's no way they're going to let that thing out until, you know, the, like, they'll probably wait a couple of yeah. weeks until after it's out before they release it. So, you know, I'd expect, like, a fortnight after the game's out, they'll probably chuck it yeah. out or something like that. And I even think, like, even at CitizenCon, they were saying when Squadron comes out, that's when Nidris comes out, that's when, and the Javelin and the other things. So e even then, they were saying, you know, they were tying those mm. those big ships to to the release. Um, so, yeah, would it be nice you know, mm. Will they do it? Probably not. But never say never. Yeah. Never say never, but highly unlikely, as we always say. Yeah. Follow the statistics and the data. Um, yeah, never say never is really us saying we don't really think so, but hey, anything's possible. Yeah. And and, and, and in very rare cases, they have changed their minds on things. It's mm. Indeed. Rare, as you're saying. Right. Chris has a question. Oh, Chris Roberts is here. You hear that? No, no, it's just Chris. Chris! Hi, Chris! <laughs> The distribution centers sound like a good use for dropships. I believe this is one of those questions of something that you and I haven't seen. Um, so we might not be able to answer this. It looks like a great dropships. If you were assaulted, putting your feet on the fire, which assault dropship would you prefer? Um, we actually, I'm thinking back to when uh, me and the military boys sat down and we actually went through every single dropship in the game as an example using their experience. And there was not a single dropship that wasn't the best at what it did. They they literally have a dropship for every occasion, and there is no one dropship that excelled over the others, right? They, yeah, they but, all had but, a place where they fit, and they worked, 
and there were there was none of them that we looked at and went that really doesn't need to exist they were the, yeah. even, even ones like the hoplite you could look at the hoplite and there were there were cases where you would need long distance and um and the redundancy and it worked as well now it might not have worked as well as the others but they, they all had their own place so it really comes down to your play style of dropship and i'm going to be honest um the one that really you know if if you're just looking for a dropship it's the cutlass black that thing just does so much already you know the ability to hold six people on seats at the back it's just such a generalized ship there's a reason why it's one of the most popular ships in the game right and when when we start to look at um multi-functionality even you, you even though on paper the spirit might look good at certain things, that Cutlass is just such an all-rounded ship. It's it's almost like those older ones, like the you, you, Algorit talks about this a lot. The, the the Starfarer, it's just got all these things in it that it shouldn't be doing, but it can. Like that thing's got like the Starfarer's got like twenty drop seats in it. Why? Why does the Starfarer have 12. drop seats or twelve? But you get my point yeah. though, right? Why is it good yeah. drop seats at all? You know, like just weird. Be- <laughs> You know, so, so, 12, so drop, twelve drop seats and a cargo hold big enough for half a dozen vehicles. It's, yeah, it's it's just it, like it's like back then they kind of didn't know what the ships were they were going to do, so they kind of did a bit too much. Now they're very niche and really pointed out and really honed because they know their craft a lot more. But, you know, the Cutlass is a hold like the Cutlass Cutlass is from Kickstarter. You know, like it's it's a holdover. Um, do yeah. I think we'll eventually see them remove them? It's possible, but I don't think so because there'll be there'll be a bit of kickback. But you know, not all ships are going to be made equal. Um, but yeah, and I and I think when you get to the drop ships, like every mm. there is a, a situation where every or one of those drop ships it mm. sells, as as you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So every one of them has a purpose. Mm. Can use them for the other things, yeah, but they're not going yeah. to be as good as for that purpose. Well, well can you and... use the as a dropship? Yes, you can. But also, yeah. you could technically use a javelin as a one-time dropship if you get my meaning. But like, <laughs> you get my point, right? Like, you, it's whether yeah. you should, you know. And uh, again, uh, getting back to the question from uh, Darth. No, it wasn't Darth. We did it. Oh, God, this is why I need to mark questions. Chris, Chris, what is your situation for your dropship? And that would tell you the best dropship to buy. Essentially, yeah. is what it is. Again, this is like a mini, mini fix my fleet. It's like, what, what are you trying to do, and what is the best ship for that role? You know, and and that'll be your answer. Like, if if you're going out with yeah. you and six mates, it's going to be very different from you and and twenty mates. You know, like it changes the if ship. Yeah. If you're going out with 80, 80 mates, then a good ship for you is a javelin. If you're going out with mm. three mates, you definitely don't want to take a javelin. So, so, Chris, I can see that you're in chat there. So, just just tell us real quick what 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 is your intended role for this dropship, and we can probably steer you real quickly if you uh, if you're fast enough. Get back to us. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, you can look at CIG's own history, Agrid. Right? They they wanted a dropship for Squadron Forty Two. That's originally what the redeem was meant for. That didn't work. They made the Hopolite. That didn't work. They went and made the Valkyrie. So they themselves, you can see the learning process that they've had to go through. They've yeah. essentially tried and failed. Like I look at the Hopolite and go, it's the only ship I would never really want to buy because the Redeemer was made, but it was not made the way they wanted, but it still works. You look at the Hopolite, they made it and they failed. So I just look at the Hopolite and go, that's the least ship I'd ever want to touch because it, because they made it knowing what they wanted and it didn't work. And so they went on to a whole different ship. So, yeah. all right. So Chris says, if you haven't watched the distribution center video from IC, no, we haven't. That's what we said at the start. So yeah. So you want it for distribution centers. Again, I'm thinking back to the only other distribution center video I've saw and they had a Cutlass Black in that, did they not, Algrid? From the video I remember. Mm-hmm. So we haven't watched IC yet. Um, Agra, do you want to watch that now? I think that might be a good segue because it doesn't look like your power. Yeah, we might. Well, it doesn't look like Agra's like coming back. Yeah, Agra's power's coming back on, so we'll we'll kick it over and watch it now. So everyone, blame Chris. It's Chris's fault. All right, here we go. At CitizenCon 2952, we introduced the concept of distribution centers. These enormous terrestrial microcosms of Star Citizen's entire FPS experience, and since that time. We've intermittently followed along with their progress as they make their way to the persistent universe in the upcoming Alpha 323. And with that milestone approaching in just the next few months, let's dive underground one more time and see where they're at now and discuss a little more about what you'll be doing once you get inside. 
What are distribution centers? It's a super, super, super basic question. But I've got to unravel about two years worth of development time in order to answer it. So a distribution center is a colossal hub that an organization owns that they distribute goods for. And this could be commodities themselves or stuff that they're making. They're very big locations on the ground. I, 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 like distribution centers, I go straight off the bat, I go, this is a part of the economic chain, yeah? Yeah. This is, the, this is their form of giving you places to transport cargo to. And again, if you think of it like real life, like Algon and I have said, like you look at the whole series of ships, you've got the D, the E, you know, the C, the B, the A, it works its way down the chain. I would expect Algon, these are the type of things A's and B's are coming to you from orbit. Yep. They're, they're bringing it from the space station down to this thing. Yep. And then spreading out to the other locations on the planet. Yep. It's at, at the present, the only distribution center that I'm aware of in game. Mm. is the Kovalex shipping hub, yep. hub which yep. is in ruins. Yep. Um, so, long time coming. It... Yep. All right. They're a hive of activity. But you can also go there and cause some chaos as well. For the player, depending on what faction it is, it's still going to be a means to way of getting different types of missions. We don't want you to go to this location and be the only person there doing a thing. In some locations, you're going to find that you're just doing a delivery mission, you're hauling some cargo out there, you're dropping it off, and you're getting your fee for doing that. But while that's happening, another player could be infiltrating it, uh, they could be assassinating a VIP in there. They provide a large variety of gameplay, anything to bombing runs, first-person combat, theft, you name it. A whole quagmire. So, so it almost sounds like to me, I read like these are just a, a mini ground station. This is another place you go and yep. um, because it's a di like not owned by, uh, uh, you know, it falls outside. It, it, they have their own laws, essentially. Like they have the laws of the system but they might have a different set of rules within that system because it's controlled by a company. You know you know how you go, um, I'm trying to put it in a way that you would understand, like Algrid works at a school, right? So when you go to the school, one school might have a different set of rules to another school. You know, that, that's what I'm trying to talk about. You get what I'm talking about, Algrid, yeah? So there'll be many, mm -hmm. like slightly different procedures and rules I, and things like that. Yeah, I, I think it, it ties in more with the main hub or main landing zone is kind of that that safe zone. Yeah. Whereas these are, even if you're on a planet that's got good laws and everything else, but they're kind of moving more into that Wild West area. There's lots of different activities that are going on. Um, yeah. That security is more lax, so you can do more nefarious things. Well, it's like, it's, it's like, just, you, it just you, opens up. It's like how, you know, Drake would, um, operate very different to origin and stuff like that you'd expect gray cat to offer different to miss mm. blah 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 like so there is going to be small subtle differences as well even the clothing they wear the, the attire the makeup of the place and things like that but again if this is tier one they're probably very similar but as time goes on the other thing i'm noticing is there's no underground stuff it's all above ground so this is the first implementation and i think the next iteration will be underground. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't seen this whole video, but I haven't seen anything underground. So this is not underground bunkers. This is purely on the surface level, and you'll probably get ones eventually that also have the underground stuff. So this is this is the first half of a two-part system from what I'm seeing, Aaron, unless you can see anything different. Yeah, well, we know that they when they first talked about the uh, hubs and the big bases, the big land places, you had your landing zones, areas where you could do stuff. They wanted them big. They wanted to have that sense. They wanted multiple things to be happening. And then as you went down, you, you know, you'd go down to the sub levels and then reach into the caves and then that could lead you to an exit elsewhere. Yeah. And I think certainly the first implementation will be an enclosed section. And then as time goes on, we'll see it opened up to other areas as well. Yeah. Just like you said, yeah. All right, back to it. Of uh, different things going on at any one time. Basically a microcosm for all the FPS-related gameplay uh, in the universe. 
What's your favorite thing about the distribution centers? They're nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> So at CitizenCon, we showed you what is going on at these locations, but you want to know what's actually coming in 3.23, so let me tell you. We're going to have multiple DCs throughout the Stanton system. Each one of those is going to be owned by different brands. Some of them are going to be friendly towards you. Some of them, they're going to be hostile towards you. At each location, you're going to have access to both sides of the building, both wings. On those wings, we have two landing pads and a hangar and two cargo freight elevators. Plus, you've got the wing itself, so all the missions that you can do outside. On the inside, you'll have access to the lobby and the rooms off that, so sleeping habs, a kitchenette, some VIP space. I will say, just real quickly, those skylights and the, the lighting exceptionally nice we have not seen no. a lot of skylight stuff like that yet um yeah that was really nice and but also the melding of the industry to that mm. to that building which you could see you know the character yeah. going down the stairs that yeah. stuff that's yeah essentially nice the way i'd put this is this is the worst we're ever going to see distribution centers they're only going to improve from here like everything else right so he mentioned yeah and they're already looking gorgeous he, he, he mentioned you know like the, the buildings kind of look the same you know you, you're going to have more styles come in more different buildings come in and improvements from there and then underground bunkers whenever that comes in we'll, we'll change it again um so yeah, yeah. it's crazy just right. to remember what mining was like when it first started and what mining's like now yeah distribution centers what we've got now is only the first step it's going to get heaps better yeah this is and some maintenance places in there as well all with missions Below that, you're into the main body of it, which has got the central part, which is the warehouse, which is where mainly all the goods go. Branching off of that leads into two side roads. From there, there can be a mixture of rooms. It's always a cargo shop. See, my, my problem with this straight away is it's sounding like bunkers again, where it's the same bunker every damn time. I, mm. I don't want that. I want it to be different every single time. I want to not know where I'm going. Right. If I if I come into a distribution center for the first time, I don't want to already know where 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 things are, where they're laid out. So I would hope eventually these are all differently laid out. Um, yeah. I don't know. Let's put it down to tier one and or, you know first implementation. I, leave it there. But yeah. I would hope with the procedural generation of tech that we end up we're getting mm. like like the space stations. There's a general form that they have. Yeah. But when, but when you first go to a space station, mm. you know it's going to have HABs, you know it's going to have mm. X, Y, and Z, but you don't necessarily know exactly where they are. But they have said and about I, the bunkers too, though, didn't they? They said that they had a thing mm. that was not allowing them to change their layout, right? And that and that's why it all felt very samey. But that, that's obviously coming. So there's obviously tech mm. they're waiting on, and hopefully it's the same case with this. So we just get one for now, but later on it'll change. Again, I'm hoping it's uh, growing pains on the road to success, so to speak. Yeah. Yep. All right. Which is a um, part delivery space, part canteen for the staff to use for refreshment and taking a break. See, that's storage. That's the other thing. Like, I just want to go back to that for a second. Like, I expect even things like this to have different styles, different effects, yeah. different quality. Like, I, I'd expect. Um, again, let's just take the whole, the whole, the old thing of Drake versus Origin. The origin one, I'd expect that that they would probably be a bit more luxurious. Like even the clothing their workers are wearing, they wouldn't just be in stuff like this. They might be in the lab coats. They might be dressed in like oh. that's the type of detail I want. I want to be able to walk into a room like this and go, it's in a high tech area. This is more likely this this like just at a glance, I should be able to look and go, this is more likely one of these manufacturers. And hey, I, even on, even on, if I look at. Uh... Microtech and Orison, mm -hmm. I would expect a different feel yeah. than if you were on Thurston, where Absolutely. they will cut corners on everything except their product, apparently. But, but like, for example, if this was on a real dusty, sandy planet, I would expect there, some of that to come through. If it was on a cold yep. planet, I'd say, look, I, I want to see some of the outside come inside is what I'm trying to say. Yes, this is for first implementation. Absolutely. Right. But down the road, we know all these systems are in place, like with all the wear and tear system and all that type of stuff. So this, again, worst you're ever going to see distribution centers. It's all uphill, yeah. all, all up in quality from here.
What's that? Indeed. Hang on. Have you visit it? No, we don't. They left. All right, cool. Right. Nope, not playing. All right, okay. So... Staff to use for refreshment and taking a break. Storage rooms, which are the main hole of distributing big cargo boxes, which have to be used to be picked up via a tractor beam. Dara. So, what was the first thing that you noticed here, Agrid? They're all the same bloody box. Yep. That's the first thing I noticed, right? Now, that works to a set level, but at this point, you know they've already got multiple different boxes in the game. Why didn't you have multiple different boxes here? Again, this almost tells me like they're going to rework this area. So, they just used one size of box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yep. again, it's all leading to upgrades, is what I'm trying to get. Yeah, anyway. Hey, what's that on the UI? Ah. All right, you might not be able to see it because it's behind me. I'll just move off screen here, but look at that. What's that algorithm down here? It's like red shit down the bottom corner. There's new new hard stuff coming in, and there's also new stuff behind the in progress there too. Look, all new hard stuff. Can you yeah. see that? Hey, yep. New shit coming in. Hey, Tom, nice to see you, bro. Um, to be used to be picked up via a tractor beam. There are work arrest areas. There are security areas side rooms and a side road which is more like a little maintenance area but it does have an underfloor again with the ventilation access that's on the inside branching out from that as well there are two wings uh, each one comes equipped with a cargo area a um, shipping depot and security door than the outside did you hopefully I know did, did, going back to what i was just saying about um inside and outside like you can tell that they've got oh, sorry i'm gonna find it again nope i lost it but they literally had the mule driving around and there was dusty roads because they were on hurston and stuff like that so mm. let me play it again you'll see it here on the floor again with the ventilation access that's on the inside branching out from that as well there are two wings uh each one and, and you can tell they're already thinking about vehicles like he was driving the mule around like they're they're, they're, they're actually mm -hmm. thinking about us vehicling around this place is so big vehicles are now becoming a part of the gameplay comes equipped with a cargo area a um shipping depot there see so that's all dusty and dirty and stuff that's the outside mm -hmm. coming inside type of thing but i want to see that come into the look you know the driveway that there'll be a build-up of dust and stuff like that again that'll come given time someone's saying so most of saying watch the bottom left when it goes about fps yeah. area combat all right we'll, we'll try to watch the bottom left and security door than the outside hopefully enough content for you to get your teeth into in this kind of initial release can you bring the endos instead uh to the outside wings yes but you can't drive them into the actual center no no oh interesting sound really no so Go ahead, they know what we did. They know what we did at Upcorp when we could yeah. take vehicles everywhere. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Why can't you take vehicles inside? Because we block them off. How'd you block them? Uh, the ball ball vehicle odds. force field? Ball odds. You're telling me there's no way a player is going to be able to track your move of any uh, vehicle over those ballers and get a vehicle inside. I would like to say no. <laughs> Backers. You know better. Uh, the challenge is made. Get yeah. the vehicles in there. <laughs> so what will bring players to the distribution centers will depend on the type of player, as we want to give variety, depending if you're an aggressive player or a non-aggressive player and or lawful or unlawful. It's for the four types of player that exist in the persistent universe. I have to say that guy's beard is very on point for Ned Kelly, Agrid. So, very on point. aggressive, lawful, unaggressive, lawful, aggressive, unlawful, and unaggressive, unlawful. Which one are you? Uh, and then, uh, and then there are the murder have those. Mm. Did you also, will go in and kill everything. Did you also notice the cape that that guy had on, just in the frame? Mm -hmm. um, well, he's dead. Well, look, that means that the cloth, some of the cloth tech stuff's coming real soon too. Yep, which is awesome. Which one are you? 
I, I quite like being aggressive. If you're going to go in, you might as well go go in hard, right? I'm nice in real life, so I can be aggressive and lawful in the verse. <laughs> I, I was going to say, he's aggressive and lawful. He's a med Kelly. Yeah, 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 100%. For aggressive. I don't, I don't know. So Ned Kelly, for those watching that don't know, it was a Australian uh, bush ranger and bush ranger. Very, very famously wore the, the metal bucket on his head with the eye slit. If you want to look into that, he's our most famous criminal. And even today, he's, yeah, he's, a, he's kind of like folklore. Anyway, right. Yeah. With lawful players, you might get a mission where you have to go in and defend one of the distribution centers from a hostile attack by outlaw gangs. You could receive. All right, so is this the FPS stuff you're talking about, Monster Avery? We've got to look at the bottom left, I'm assuming. Eve, a distress call from the owner of the distribution center being informed that a gang is trying to acquire goods from a certain section of it, say the storage room. The play will arrive. Ah, look, I think he is right. So uh, I've got to do this to Avery because I can't see. It yep. says Hurston Dynamics, and then there's yep. bars. So, yeah, the rep system. Yeah, start of the rep system. Yeah, cool. Good to see. Good to see. Moving along, moving along. Yep, I like it. Um, they will make their way uh, to the location which is under attack. They will go in. They will see a battle underway uh, between defending forces and the attackers. And they will join sides with the defending forces to take out the attackers. Those attackers might come in waves, they might have big heavies with them. So straight off the bat, I go, players go in, more players get sent in behind to stop you. Can you, can you yep. see, I can see that happening in a heartbeat. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, and so it's an expansion on the current underground mission, but yeah, yeah. Missions where yeah, you're essentially. trying to protect. But this is going wider. It's almost a mini Siege of Orison type yep. setup. Yep. Hmm. With the option of support either faction by the, by the sound or look of it. Yeah, absolutely. They might have bigger weaponry, um, but you will join together, possibly with friends, to take out this big assaulting force. Lawful non aggressive players might want to do something more like delivery or hauling. It's a distribution center. Um, so you'll be able to come in, land, load your ship with all the various cargo depending on what kind of it, it, it's it's like um the way i'm looking at this algorithm is is i think i've heard it called in other games points of interest they are moving mm -hmm. us towards those points of interest to to create player yep. uh, clashes in multiple different ways because even if you're just delivering a cargo box right you could rock up and there are two player factions going at it and you're just here i'm here to deliver a box what are you doing here? You know, like, like, are you, are you the bad guy? <laughs> like you, you, they could, you could be in harm's way and you just turn up to deliver a box and they just take you out because they don't know what you are. You know, that type of shit. Yep. Or, you know. or you are forced to defend yourself and you end yeah. up. Yeah. You, you're in for you a box know. mission and it turns into a combat mission. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you, you know, you're, you're defending yourself. The security shooting you, or, you know, so now you're, up a creek because yeah. you're now you're now building a rep with the criminals even though you didn't intend to. Mm. Yeah, it, mm. no, lots of lots of possibilities. Yeah, again, that's why they're doing it. The points of interest to 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 that emergent gameplay is just going to hype that all up because you are focusing mm -hmm. people all into these points. Yeah, no, absolutely. A distribution center it is, and take it where it needs to go. Whether that's another distribution center or somewhere else completely different. The plan from doing an internal delivery would be using a hover trolley to distribute one cargo or multiple cargo boxes from one section in the distribution center to another. They really are big enough to do an entire mission without ever leaving. You could be doing a delivery from one room, let's say the storage room, up to the lobby. Or sounds like um, it sounds like a bit of a missed opportunity to use vehicles we already had. Why would you make an entire vehicle that that's that size that moves at walking speed? That artificially yeah. makes it bigger than it needs to be. Why couldn't you have just used an Ursa or used uh, like some of the vehicles we already had? Like, I just don't get that. Like, what? Because why? Because it artificially it makes, makes it, it bigger than it needs to be because you're going to walk, and it's. Yep, it's a bit like uh, yeah. there's some games where you were forced to walk rather than run. Yeah. 
in certain areas. And the idea of it was just to give that sense of mm. space. I don't think this needs that sense of space because I think just looking at it, that space seemed bloody huge. Yeah. But. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm laughing at Lemming. He literally said, ah, oh, this might sound strange, but I just found out why my sound sounded so far away. He had his, head, he had his headset on backwards. Like, how do you get the mic around the back of your neck? Uh, anyway, that's a pretty good mic then if it's picking up your, like when your mic's behind your head. But anyway, all right, let's keep going. You might do an all-out assault on the distribution center. You can fly in, um, the location security will kick in, so you'll be trespassing, you'll get shot at by turrets. If you manage to land, you will infiltrate the facility. All guards will be hostile to you, and you can go in, you can, uh, if it's an assassination mission, you can go in, take out VIP. If it's a theft mission, you can run a heist, go in, rob the place, get out again. Each uh, distribution center, especially the bigger company ones, would have armed guards at least on site. They'd also have um, turrets mobilized around the outside, so you would have to, you coming in by air is very dangerous because you would be distinctly seen as trespassing. So each security zone around distribution center protects it, even from the air, not just the ground. Everything I'm seeing on grid is, is like what you said, like, and, and, and I'm just resonating and thinking about what you said. Is mm -hmm. It is an upgrade to the bunker systems. You're just not in a bunker anymore, right? You, you are outside that they, they've got more moving parts it's not these little outpost bunker sons bunkers anymore it is is the full-fledged thing right we're taking that yeah. test bed and expanding it out and they'll expand it out again and it'll also be underground but like fundamentally you don't need the underground part to get these systems working the underground is just a change of location right so when when they yeah. get that underground stuff sorted which will probably come i don't know whenever they bring it out right you, you, it could be a part of base building whenever like doesn't matter they're, they're using this as a test bed and they're, they're, they're you know they had bunkers they did whatever they're doing there and they're now doing up step and you can start to see that they they're, they're moving in all these different facets and we're going to get all these different things yeah well it's really interesting i can see if they go down if they go down the line of development and they bring in for more underground cave entrance type stuff yep. that will significantly open the path for stealth missions yep. into those bunkers so you yeah. don't have to just assault it to do your assassination. Yeah. You could stealth in to do your assassination. Yeah. What, what, so, are, what are all the back entrances that they add in down over time? Like, can you come in via the sewage system into the douche and under the ground? Do, you know, can you come through a random cave system that they didn't even know existed and blow out a small section of wall? You know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Oh, I clicked twice. So for non-aggressive, unlawful uh, theft missions would be prime example of you sneaking into distribution center to avoid being detected thank you for the super chat waffle two pound hope yep. for the night have a good night see you see you waffle bye thanks waffle take care and be well acquire goods unlawfully you can basically do a stealth version of the hostile mission so instead of it being an all-out assault and going in guns blazing Maybe you find a back route in, maybe you sneak in past guards, make your way to the location without being detected. If you get the item that you need to steal, uh, you can turn around, make your way out, and hope they don't find you. For players that don't have a mission, the response that you get when you approach a distribution center is going to depend on which distribution center it is. Some are going to welcome visitors, they'll be quite happy to see you. Others. Definitely don't want any visitors at all. So depending on the type of facility, some public ones and you'll be able to come in and just use it as a social space. Other higher security level ones, you would not have or be granted access without being granted admission. This is just going back to Agra, what we were talking so about. Besides variety, you know, so like, yeah. like, like how I was talking about high, you, you can just see this column almost like a grid algorithm when we, when we lay yeah. things out. So you've got low, medium, high tech, but then you've also go, do they want you there? Do they not want you there? What is the different social situation? And then every cross-pollination combination you and, could possibly think of. And I could even imagine in the high security areas, if you've got really good rep with those high security guys, you may be welcomed, even yeah. though you don't have a mission down the track. Yeah. So yeah, it just so many ways they can open that up. Yeah. You, again, and because... And because and because they're bigger than the, the underground outpost we've got now, mm. so many ways you can increase the gameplay that comes yep. 
with that. So, yeah. yeah. No two distribution centers will, will be alike. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Transmissions, if a player decides to go like full chaotic evil inside a distribution center, they can go in full guns blazing, but they're going to be met with a lot of resistance. So you're going to need to zing some pretty, like I'd ha a heavily armored ship to deal with the anti-air guns and a lot of firepower when you get inside because there's a load of guards to deal with. So a big driving force behind the distribution centers is to really bring players together in all different kinds of ways. So maybe you've got somebody there who's running a delivery mission, and at the same time, you've got a group of people coming in to raid the place and steal a bunch of stuff. They all get caught up together in a whole big mess, and the hope is that it's a fun, exciting, and probably quite chaotic experience. You know how you get um, people that do like speed running our grid and you get yep. people that like do solo stuff i'm i'm thinking of a friend of mine here um i've got a friend in australia called the spud hunter and he plays a lot of multiplayer games solo and i've often said to him i'm i, I can't wait to start this and get to a point where he can go in and actually do some of the stuff he does because he'll like at the moment he's even playing um hell divers 2 but he's doing it solo it's a yep. like, it's a full player co-op game and he's just all on his own but I can see him now going into that bunker that's meant for a multi-crew and he's doing it on his own. Like, he would yeah, do that and in a heartbeat. And, and because it is a large area where multi-people can be, but also you can do things solo, it, it, it opens that up. Yeah. Now, you can do bunker missions like that at the moment, but they are still, at the moment, those bunker missions are very one-dimensional in what mm. you can do. And what I see here is, yes, it's the same type of mission, but they're also pulling in so many more different, or trying to pull in so many more different aspects. And, yeah, I, I, I could see people doing nudie runs. Yep. As, you know, mm. And, and um, just taking, pick, like picking up the gun and, 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 and going with what they've got. Yeah, and, absolutely. And then because, and because there's so many more NPCs and different types of NPCs, mm. it's totally different from doing, you know, the, 10 or so NPCs you get it in a bunker. Apologies to this developer for the awkward, uh, <laughs> the awkward pose on his face. My bad. All right, here we go. Experience. We want it so that as you're playing it through, yeah, other things are happening around you. Things that you sort of want to get involved in yourself. I hope the players receive it as mainly for the variety to give the players the choice to like, just to lean into, do they want to be aggressive or do they want to be passive that we know different players like playing different ways. So we're hoping this variety in the distribution center gives the players the access whether they want to play that aggressive or passive fantasy inside the verse. Of course, this is the first drop of the distribution centers and development will be ongoing. We're shooting for a healthy variety of distribution centers uh, for 323 and more to come as we approach 4.0. So at some point after 3.23... Uh... Just like we said, Agrid, yeah? So, yeah. All, all, all are given. All right, cool and into the future i don't know when we are going to be looking at the end game stuff that you want to play and that's going to be in the form of raids Raid, raids. don't put that in oh yeah. <laughs> so what did we learn this week well we learned the distribution centers will be home to missions and gameplay of every sort that alpha 323 will mark their arrival that the much anticipated raid gameplay first discussed at CitizenCon will follow at some point thereafter. And that if you're the ISC gameplay capture team working in builds weeks and sometimes even months before Evocati, you may find that the planets of Pyro and Stanton have, have loaded into the same physical space and turned themselves inside out. And all you're trying to do is make your weekly show. Don't worry, they're having the time of their lives. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Mm. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. Like that. And it's sipping at the movie reference, because it looks like he's doing movie reference posters at the end of every mm -hmm. one of these now. Now I... <laughs> Betty Dancing. The time of my life Though I never felt like this before, yes, I swear it's the truth, and I owe it all to you, Booch. Oh. 
interesting. Alrighty. Um, yeah, that was actually pretty good. Um, nice update. Um, nice to see where they're going. I don't know. Anything you would add to that, Alfred? No, it, it was uh, quite nice. Um, I like the expansion. I like the idea of the you know, stuff. I suppose the raids, we can't have, you know, that that opens it up so you can you can see mm. every planet within a distribution centre will have that ability to have those yeah. types of raids. And but you can even see that going from just distribution centres to a building in a city, you know, to to a small local yeah. outpost. So there's that gameplay is not just exclusive to that. It it changes no. the, the scope and scale of it. But you you put it in a different place, and that gameplay could be there. They're essentially building out the varieties of different gameplay. Um, real quick, Red Samurai, thank you for the basic membership on YouTube. Um, awesome, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. It, it, it's not unexpected to me. Um, I think it kind of followed up and said everything we we kind of said at the end there. So yeah, it kind of, I don't. It's good, good progress. Um, you want to go on to the next question, Andrew? Yep. I don't remember where we we're up to because I didn't mark it. Uh, Cragon says, "Do we know what would make the the ships that would escort attack industrial ships?" So what manufacturer would make escort ships? I'd assume it'd be a pole, wouldn't it? Um, he said, do you know what, what, who would make these ships that, that would escort attack industrial ships? What would be a larger pole ship since we know we have some combat ships we have now? Well, it'd be a pole, but la we don't have a larger ship manufacturer from design in it. Unless you know something I don't from more perspective. Not offhand. Um, we only really know of two... Well, a power or Gatak could be building the bigger ships, depending on their, their role. We, I don't think we have... Well, Apollo is their smaller mm. ship manufacturer. I assume they'll probably have a medium and a large and potentially a capital yep. manufacturer to it. It really depends where they but want to But we don't have... Before. Like, from memory, power is an industry company. Mm. A Gatak is an industry company. We actually don't have a company, so far to my knowledge, that is... Uh, making military vehicles or dedicated fighters, and, and so and much like what we said, they probably won't see those or most of those until their expansion comes, if ever. You know? No, that's right. Yeah. And we may we may get a dedicated, you know, we may get more dedicated fighters. Mm. Uh, so you know, we'd get. Well, we've got the Santaki Eye. Um, that's probably the biggest mm. fighter we've got so far. So that would be a power. Um, yeah, take yeah. your pick. Yeah, build a new either a power or build a new company. It's... Yeah, you'll have to go ask um the writing team or Dave Haddock on that one. So yeah, yeah. Right, Fat Gus says, if I buy a Kraken, should I keep it in my active fleet or is it a safe to put it into buyback? Um, I think you're safe to put it in buyback for a little bit, but again, every time there are, you know, you'll let, let's take the Flaris as an example, right? We have known mm -hmm. they've been working on the Polaris now for quite a while. I have no doubt when they actually are looking at bringing the Kraken out, those bigger ships tend to get a bit of a limelight. Same thing happened with the Banning Merchant Man. You know, so, so when they start working on the Kraken, I think you'll know about it and know when it's time to take it out, right? Um, but, it, but always remember, there's the risk that it will go up in price. Yeah. Although, at present... And I can only mm. say at present, generally ships you have in buyback, or certainly mm. packs you have in buyback, or concept ships you have in buyback, mm. they don't go up in price. Mm. And so, at present, well, something in buyback. It, it, then, then it becomes down to when did you, when did you yep. individually buy it? Yep. So, yeah, yeah. And mm. and that become that becomes the uh, the question. So yeah. Your guess is as good as ours. Yeah, but... so, so, so again, you're going to have to look that on a, on a, a personal level for yourself. I personally, I have a crack and I'm keeping it in in my hangar. I'm not... My, um, yeah. my, my view in terms of melting those really big ships is mm. if I melt a really big ship, it's because I intend to use those funds elsewhere and those really big expensive ships, mm. I know once I melt them, I probably... The chances of melting are significant because of a cost, even if I yeah. get them back at the price I paid. So, yeah, 
I tend not to. But that's me. And, and that's your own personal thing and everyone's going to yeah. look out their own things. And that. Again, most of the advice we give is generalized and um, that's how the way it's got to be. That's how we don't get complaints so good. So, yeah. Well, um, got to avoid that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Definitely. I'll, well, we don't... Well, in all the time we've ever done this, I don't, we very minor complaints and very... Like, none that haven't been resolved, put it that way. Yeah, I, ha- I haven't yeah. heard anyone say, we led you... we You led us down the garden path, you gave mm-hmm. me the wrong oil, and I've spent this much, and I've, I'm really pleased off of yeah. you. No, we because haven't we, that. We, we kind of let them drive, so to speak. We just follow their lead. Right. Um, next question is from Dub Coyote, who says, what new ships do you think we will get at Invictus? I could care to speculate. Oh... The I'm mythical gonna... anvil capital ship. I'm going to say military. Because yeah, that's the well, safe word, yeah, well, yeah. that's why anvil would be mythical anvil, mili- mm. you know, capital ship. It, it, um, it'd be great if we got the Polaris at Invictus, but I won't hold my breath. You know, like, like it, it would be a. Let's look at was it where it was at Citizen Con. Um, it, it potentially could be there, but I like being such a big ship. I won't hold my breath if it's not. But it'd be awesome if it was. And again, like, is it going to be ready? Like, is the game ready for that? I, I don't think we... It's the same size as the 89 Jump, so, so, you know, there's no feasible it could go in, but um, whether they'll put in is another question. Um, they are doing yeah. the, the, the testing on the Idris stuff, so if they're looking at testing that stuff, it, it could feasibly be there. But again, don't, don't be surprised if it's not, but if it is, that's awesome. Um, as for other ships, again, like I said, military-based anything that's military based uh, i think the exception to that was when they did well, the very lackluster invictus last year what was it the the fury the Lynx, and the and i'm thinking i'm blanking on the last one it was two vehicles um, um links and something, yeah something else and i can't remember what the last one was but yeah it was two it was the most lackluster luster invictus that we've ever had probably the most lackluster sale we've ever had period um but uh, yeah, I can't, I'm just totally blanking on what it was, but I know it was another vehicle. So it, th- there was no ship with a quantum drive. That's how shitty it was. It's yeah. in you. So yeah, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I've... something new, um, you know, I, and I'd probably point to the, as Algrid calls it, the yellow curtain video, um, which is the the one from CitizenCon. I, I, I'd probably expect something off that from there. Um, or multiples from there um but yeah coming up to where we are now uh leading to march we're probably due for a singular new thing this is pretty common around this time they, they start to kick the hype train up for like it'll probably come with the patch average yeah when when the when the patch drops there'll probably be some new little thing in there like a new vehicle or a new ship or something um yeah i would expect that it's pretty, pretty common these days so um maybe that vehicle they're working on in january I don't know. Yeah. The only thing that Algrid and I will say, and I've said it many, 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 many times, but I know Algrid will agree with me on this, is the only thing consistent about CRG is how inconsistent they are. Um, they make it very hard to track what they do. Um, right, next question. Uh, Mopar225 says, thanks for answering the question. I really appreciate it. Oh, you, you are most welcome. I answered it twice. Right. Uh, dropped Yogurt. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, I had a chance to catch up with him the other day. Uh we're playing we're playing with henken we're playing uh hell divers too that's right that's what we're doing yeah nice to see buddy uh his question is why do you think crg is having trouble getting scanning into the game uh because it's a big system and there's a lot of networking stuff in the background that that, scanning is a complicated thing you know like trying like how does it work like it's not just like here's everything in the game like, like they've got to have a, a like a limitation to it. It's like like everything that that, that me and Algrid say is every thing in design has to have a negative aspect to it to to make it balanced. If it just does everything and it's really simple, it's too powerful. Um, so they got to balance it. So little... yes, they could put it in with so it does everything. Like, but imagine but what then... Paris would be like if they could just find you anywhere. Yeah, it'd be too strong. You know, one extreme or the other. Um, no, no, I think so. So, so, um, so scanning is in the game in particular parts, but what what, it, what he's t- specifically talking about is long range scanning. So, can I sit there in my cutlass and I'm at Hurston 
and I can see that you're coming from Microtech to Hurston and you're halfway along on your journey. Like, can I see you 500 to a, mil a million kilometers out and, and go cut you off? Can I set up a trap? Can I set up the a, a quantum dampener to pull you out? Stuff like that. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about long range scanning, not the hand scanning or scanning with a, a ship to find minerals. He's talking the, 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 the proper scanning ships, like, like a Terrapin or um, a capital ship, the ones that are designed for it. Yeah, snare. So, so again, it's to get that gameplay and that core gameplay that we talked about before. Agro, is there anything you want to add to that, buddy? No, I, I think that, that pretty much sums it up. And if it could do everything, mm -hmm. look, I would expect a ship like an Endeavour mm -hmm. with its telescope mm -hmm. or radar dish would be the type of one that could would be picking up pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's going to, you know, you'd it, want to zero in and focus it, on certain things. Yeah, but might, you don't want your it, cutlass able to do all that. It might pick up on everything, but it's it's really weak in everything. It yeah. can see everything, but then it's got to, like, it, like it finds something, and that's where it sends the character. It's like, we found and that's this why it's little something thing. Else, I'll, I'll find it out. I'll yeah, send the probe out. Found this, yeah. little, found this little anomaly. Carrot, can you go over there and have a look and see if it actually is anything? So you'll get all the way, and it could be nothing. It was all fake. But then you get over there and it's a whole, it's a wormhole. You know, that yeah. type of thing. There's a level to the scanning as well. Look at how it's laid out. Right. Um, Pagon also asks a question. How do you think they will try to gamify the escort loop so it's fun? Best case scenario for the person being escorted is it has safe run with no issues, but then, but that's not going to be fun for the escort. So, well, that, that's a part of what escorting it is. Like, It'll also depend on the ships you're escorting. Like, you know, you know, like if you're in a Polaris, you, you're gonna have the hangar to use. Like, like, do you have enough fuel to, as an escort ship, to go across the system? Uh, so there, all of a sudden, it becomes you have to p pick a particular ship to be an escorter. This is a particular long escort mission, so I need to take my Vanguard. But that limits the guns I can take because I'm on a Vanguard, you know. Or, or do I need to get another person with me and take a redeemer because we need more guns because we're going in a particular? You know what I mean? Like it's 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 nuanced even in that yeah. straight off the bat. Like you, you you're not just going to be I own a Hornet and this is my job. It is going to be nuanced and you are going to be again combat is broader than it appears. Am, am I am I only doing escort up to X point mm. before I veer off to get my? Yep. refuel am i being replaced by another yeah. escort am i am i but teaming I also up get where he's coming from as well like am i teaming up with you know instead of, like the previous mission was me and my mate and separate hornets am are we teaming up together and now we're in a hurricane or uh, now we're in a scorpius are we going together because this particular mission has different requirements and yeah it, just like we saw today with them doing every different combo of a different reduction center, you're going to have every different combo of a combat mission, right? And and there is never going to be a one-trick ship. You, you As a combat person, you will have a myriad of fighters under your belt, and you'll probably, more than likely, because they're cheaper, like as in combat ships are cheaper, you'll probably have 10 ships at this hangar and 10 ships at another hangar, so you don't have to fly back and get them and stuff like that. And you'll have different ships with different... Like a Banu Defender and a Vanguard, they go further than other ships, right? And you, yep. so, so, so there'll be certain missions that you take things on. Like, it's so clear how this is all going to work. And it's also going to be how you make friends because you, you, you'll, you'll start hanging out with those people and, and you might, one day you might be an escort fighter. The next thing you know, you're a gunner on their, they've got, they've moved from a mole and they've gone to an Orion and you are now the turret gunner on the Orion because you can make more money. And then the next day they go back to the mole for a different reason and you're back in your Hornet again. And before you know it, you're a part of their org. Now, uh, before someone, yep. who was it? Um, Hook 2005 said, um, he, he had he had a thing that was really, really profound. And I don't know where this stat is from, right? So he could be full of shit, right? So take that with a grain of salt, right? But um, Hook, if you want to back yourself up on this, send me a link, right? But Hook said, 57% of players prefer playing solo. Keep that in mind. Now, I don't know where he took that from, but that is a very interesting stat. How are they going to take 57% of people and massage them into wanting to play with other people? slowly but surely over time like you have build trust with people in real life that's exactly how they're going to do it yeah. it's like why would i get this other escort guy when i can go with the guy that i know 
Why would I go get another turret gunner when I could just borrow that guy that I know? You, you can see where it's going. Like, they're, they're slowly but surely, just like in real life, where trust is built, they're going to move you into it naturally. Look, and I, I can remember doing Dayok, you know, mm-hmm. and doing the raids. And you get to a point where, you know, you're doing stuff with your friends, your friends are into raids, and eventually you join them a couple of times, but eventually you start getting invited to do the raids. Mm. Yeah, we need, yeah, we need, we need Al because he does X. Yep, he's in. Mm. Um, yeah, he's now leading this, this faction of a raid because of X, Y, and Z, you know, mm. because as you get built, as you go and play and you play with the bigger groups, even though you don't normally, you know, when I started, I wasn't playing with the big groups. I wasn't playing with a big org. And yet, as time went on, because you're always there, or always joining in, just because of what you're up to, you end up getting, you know, you end up doing it a lot more often than you originally intended. Just because um, this actually can tie in a little bit with saying, I'm skipping this question to the front of the queue, but Hook205 says, question, will we have to pay insurance and parking on all ships who are not flying and not go break? So so that that's another advantage of playing with other people. Yep. They've talked about org hangers. Why... Why pay a huge big fee on your own where you can chip in with other people and share the hangar fees, right? This is the other thing that people don't look at. And yeah, the more ships you have, the more you should have to pay for them. It's a maintenance cost. It's going to literally limit the number of ships you can have because you, you, you'll have to pay for them. But again, it's more like, look, no, no, this is not, none of this is, all, is being detailed out. This is me speculating. I want to make this really clear, right? But I, I think it's going to be more number of locations based. Than the number of ships, right? I uh, yeah, I've got a feeling that will be the case because if it is, because if you because if you have ship. if you have two hundred plus cool. ships, right, you can keep them all in one place and that's relatively fine. But if you start to spread them out and you had two hundred locations, you think about that like look, look it's it's kind of yep. like what our grid talks about with the base building stuff, right? If you've got to have the electricity on in every single place, the power on it, you get where I'm going, right? The the fuel. That they have to be cleaned, maintained. It's cheaper to have them all in one spot than it is to have them all separated out. Yeah. And again, you have to have limitations to stop people from just doing whatever they want. Now, um, mm-hmm. it is digital, so you know, like they'll take this and balance it where they want it to go. In short, is what I'm trying to say, uh, without going into detail. Agar, I think you'd kind of agree with that. Like they're going to make it balanced yeah. a bit. It will be balanced. Yeah. And that's all you got to worry about. Yeah. The, the, the gameplay will come first. It'll be more along the lines of they don't want you to be able to just turn around and pull any ship out from anywhere because you have a, a quadruple billion ships. They either want it to take time for you to get it there or, the, or, or they want you to travel to get it and bring it back. Right? Yep. The, 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 you can see there's already a limitation there. They don't just want you to go, oh, they killed my javelin. He's my second javelin. They don't want you to be able to do that. They want you, you know, like, so there has to be consequences your actions yeah, sure. and your failures and your successes right so you you you, you can't just have a big the i win button every single time there has to be limitations so, yeah right. and and you know like I, if i do it by the number of ships you've got out then i think it'll be the number of ships you've actually summoned to that mm-hmm. port right if you've got x number of ships but mm-hmm. you haven't actually spawned them or yeah. summoned them then i don't think they'll you know, I, I think that will be different from say the ships you actually got stored in the hang- yeah, yeah, actually stored in the hangar. Again, they haven't really de- ever detailed this out, but like, nope. like, like Hook kind of follows up saying, in my opinion, you should only play insurance and park ships you use fly. Yeah, they might even have a thing like long, long-term storage where you can put ships into long-term. We don't know yet. They've never really detailed it out. But I think at the end of the day, knowing it's a game, the gameplay is going to come first. And they there will be restrictions on it, right? But, but it won't be not fun right they will yeah. it's it, you got to remember when you're making a game it's got to have restrictions so it's balanced all around um and, and, and that's the thing and, and and sometimes it can feel a little imbalanced because oh this person's got 500 ships but that person's 500 ships should never trump an individual skill and they've talked about it this whole game is skill based right so you like if you are good at something like if you are good at mining and you understand mining the person that walks in is not going to be as good as what you are. They have, and you can see that already with mining. Like there are people that like do mining and they are exceptionally good at it. 
you get other people that come in and they just blow up a rock in their face. Like how many times have we all seen that? And it'll be exactly the same with everything yeah. across that. Salvage is no different. Combat's no different. You get people that, are, that they're in their single seat fighters dueling and they're complaining because they don't want the game to change. Well, they've been talking about the game changing for a long time. Yeah. And it's always, well, gonna, it, it was, it yeah, it was always going to move to this multi crew thing. It was always going to be a part of it. It was just this tech that was holding it back. And they don't well, want it to change. I've heard multiple creators in the last couple of weeks going, I don't want it to change. I'm sorry, you're in for a rude awakening. Especially, oh, just sorry. take... Uh, just even, to, don't even take multi-crew. Just take armor. Armor's going to change the, your, your game straight off the bat. Even go even a step further. Go into the, uh, the engineering, where your mm. components are going to break down. As a single-seat fighter, when your components break down, you're screwed. You're mm. going to have to repair them. You got to get out of your ship to do it. Yeah, the gameplay is going to change. It was always going to change. Mm. Um, but yeah. Mm. Anyway, next question. Uh, uh, John Ski says, "Question: What happened to Badger's ISC? Okay, uh, Badger's Badger's actually decided to leave us. He um he's gone back to doing his own stuff. Um, and that happened a while back. Um, that's when wish him well. He will still turn up for." um command and control episodes he will be doing those um he just was no longer officially an front of us. He, he just wants to do his own way um yeah i'm wrong with that things change nope. just like todd pappy left uh but just decided to move on no problem um nope. yeah wish him well. and Still talk to him. Suggest... I, I i talked to him yesterday so yeah i'm gonna suggest since it is 727 mm. that you kill the ball okay well, i'll do that now and that will hopefully mean that in the next 30 minutes we'll get through the remainder of our questions. Yep. Okay. What is dead? Um, Ash Hole or Mr. Hole uh, says, question, has there ever been anything in Evo that never came to the PU eventually? I, I believe there's been a few things that went to Evo that never came out, Agrajir. Can you just give us a yes or no to that? I believe so, but I couldn't recall from memory. I'd have to go digging back and but uh, yeah, I remember thing, hearing things in the leech pack notes that never came out. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Citizen Scott says, "What do you all make of the lawful, unlawful, and aggressive, non-aggressive system they view players as and design around?" Um, it almost sounds like a bit of D and D, doesn't it? Our grid. I'll just actually I should finish this question. Is the SC oh. morality alignment system akin to D and D? That's my question for me. Is it akin to D and D? Our grid. Do you play D and D? I don't. So. Do you see that as a little bit like D&D, &D, I guess? Well, it's the alignment system is just basically how people determine uh, are you lawful neutral, are you lawful good, are you someone who always abides by law, are you just do what, what feels good to you. Uh, murder hobos, I'd put as chaotic evil. They just do what they want because it suits them and everyone kind of says they're evil. You know, so. uh, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it's I, just a nice I, way of putting tags on people. I heard as in it's categorizing, allowing people to do everything they want to do in different ways. That's, yep. that's all I heard. It's just a, it's just a way to put it in coding terms or, or, or categorize it. That's all. That's all I heard, um, and I got no problem with that. Yep. Um, it, it just it, it's essentially another way of uh, that's telling us they're giving us every type of thing that we want. Um, yeah, I, I, I embrace it, and I again, I have no doubt. Yep. Even you, Agrid, will will have a moto hobo spree just for something different one day you know um that's why i have multiple accounts so i can do yep. you know i want to do it i may not do a murder hobo spree but i will certainly do criminal gameplay mm -hmm. at some point because i want to be able to experience and see everything yeah. um I, I without have, screwing up my character i heard a story in the hurston gazette old man hurston goes crazy kills all the uwu girls yeah murder hobo spree yeah <laughs> We'll see. They would. They didn't want to take their flea collars. That's uh, all I'll say. He keeps flea go collars on human females. You heard it here first. Great. Uh, mm -hmm. Citizen Scott says question. Uh, no, that's the same one we just did. Uh, Darth Bol Bolvin says question. Will all guns go down a size? Uh, no. That they're pretty much saying the same. Have you heard anything different to that? I think he's talking I about haven't. the removal of the. Uh, the, the gimbal type of thing for uh... yeah so they could when they remove a gimbal say all sizes on ships gun sizes go down a level they mm -hmm. could do that yeah um 
or the, I suppose the hard point drops down a level mm-hmm. as, as the way they balance it. But I haven't heard anything. Um, all we know is the gimbals are going away and that means that we lose that negative gun size modifier for having a gimbal. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, Darth Balfour, a second question. Will Spectrum ever become a must-use, what's his name, uh, Knight Rider? Um, yep. And I, I think the biggest issue with that is that they have don't have downvoting arrows. And apparently that was a design thing from the get-go because they didn't want people piling on other people. Um, I think, unfortunately, in a democracy, you need you need that. That's how you know that you've done wrong. And that's why there's just so yeah. much shit on Spectrum. And I think Reddit's probably a bit the same um, and stuff like that. Like, um, like, I used to go to the Reddit every single day until they allowed loud memes and stuff and pictures. Now you go on there and you've got to go multiple pages. Like it was just all news, like highly condensed news about the entire game. Now it's like 90% memes and pictures and shit like that. And then one piece of news. And I'm the last time I went on there, I had to go 11 posts down to actually got a news item. And so it's just, I now have to sort through all this stuff to get to it. And Spectrum's no different. You've got to sort through all these shitty posts to get to decent posts. And the only way we, we don't have a way to filter those out. It's the same thing. Like, if I had the ability to go into Reddit and turn off memes and pictures, I'd keep using Reddit, but I can't do that. And, it's the same, and yet... It's the same thing on, on Spectrum. Like, Spectrum will never be what they want it to be until they put the downvoting arrows in. Yeah. And yet they also want Spectrum to be the tool we use yeah. for in-game communication. Yeah. You, you, you can't... And at the moment, you, I don't think you, about that. Uh, much like game design, where you have to have a positive and negative, you need a way to tell people that they're, they're doing wrong. Right now, they called it piling on, but isn't that how democracy works? Like, if things go really too shit, like let's let's take a real world example, like a real life example. If someone is doing wrong, someone will go out and punch someone in the face. Like, if you go to that extreme where you drive someone so nuts, they will punch you in the face, right? But it's not a digital punching someone in the face to give them a downvote arrow. That is anonymously telling them that they have done wrong. Now, if you put a post out and a thousand people tell you that you've done wrong. You've done fucked up, right? But if five people have downvoted you and 20 have voted you up, you kind of go, hmm. It's the same reason why me and Algra did that po- that poll on the GoFundMe, because we wanted to know what what is, you know, like how you guys thought. And and basically, we thought not many people would want to help us. When it turned around that it was 45%, we were like, well, that's a lot of people. Why do so many people want to help us get the citizen card? It's not what we expected. And again, how do you how did we learn that through a poll and that's essentially what it is when you've got up voting and down voting arrows every one of those topics is a poll and if you cannot give down voting arrows you are gaslighting people you are literally only giving them positive reinforcement not negative and so they just get the, like it's daydreaming it is not real it is it is one side of a two part conversation you need, like, like, like I was saying earlier, when when you have an argument, there's two sides to every argument. There, there is a positive and a negative. And if you're only getting the positive, you're off on dreamland. I can only ever do good. That's why that is- place is full of shit. Because everybody that posts there think they're doing God's work, or whatever you want to call it. They, they, they think they're doing correctly. But because it is the same thing with our with our videos, yeah, with our YouTube and stuff. We are more than happy for you to downvote. Absolutely. We're more than happy for you to put negative comments on. Because that's how we um, know that we've done stuff up. That, you know, like, like we get one video that gets 1,000 views, we get another one that gets 10,000 views. Hmm, why was that? And sometimes you can't tell. Sometimes you look at it and go, 10, why did that get so many views? Why, why was that so interesting? And you got no idea. And then you get another video, and it's like, well, that was obvious. What that was good. Like, there's some videos I say to Agra, and I'm like, I'm like, that's going to go terribly. We can't do that, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and we do it, and it goes through the roof. Absolutely. And we've had a couple like that. Yeah. So I, so I, there's ones where I've been completely off the mark, and then there's others like I'm totally on point. There's, there's times you just can't tell because you can't tell what the masses want like because everyone has their own distinct individual opinion but the problem is if you can't tell people the negativity it just doesn't work and until spectrum allows you to downvote people it'll never ever be fixed the problem is they see this piling on thing as a negativity no it is keeping people in check 
right? It's just like with anything, politics, religion, whatever. If you don't have an ability to tell people you disagree with them, society breaks down. It just, it just doesn't work. And that's why Spectrum doesn't work. I haven't gone to Spectrum at all. Like, like, like I avoid, actively avoid it. And I know I'm not the only one. I, I would, like, like, every time we've talked about Spectrum, vast majority of people do not go there. So if there's anyone at CIG listing, and I've said this to Knight Rider directly, and I'll say it again, and hopefully it's someone at CIG that hears me, please test downvote errors. Please test it. And guess what? I know that I'm not the only one that thinks this way, and I also know I'm not the only person, because I've had people from CIG message me and tell me, you are correct, we need to test this. But there's, there must be someone internally fighting that don't want it, right? Test it. Tread the water. That's how you find out if the community wants it or not. Do a, do a one-month test period of downvote errors and see if the traction of Spectrum increases. And I guarantee you bring in ne negative downvote errors, people will swarm that and you'll see you, use case, like it'll, it'll be used like never before. Because you can finally come in and say, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot. And all the shit will just disappear. And, and, and even if you only tried it on certain posts, like think about the, the 10 for the question. You know those questions, Hagrid, like where they, does it fit? They will all piss off. And we can actually get information out of those 10 questions that we need. We won't have to struggle to get them those really cool questions upvoted. And, and, and you can look at the data from Google, like 70% of people do not go to the second page. So from your mentality, you want 30% of people to go to the second page second page and fight the other 70 to get it upvoted that doesn't work 30 versus 70 is never going to pan out you're, 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 the way you are set spectrum up it is designed for failure you have to have a democratic de de uh, democratic system that is 50 50 positive and negative negative. and if you want to have a break even point add a third one why can't you have an upvote arrow downvote arrow and i'm going to sit on the fence do that if, if you really want the don't pile on bullshit, that's where you go. You don't go only positivity. And I know I'm ranting, but I am over freaking Spectrum. It, it has been broken since the get-go. And I know uh -huh. I'm not the only one, right. because I know there's developers that have reached out to me and said, this is bullshit, we can't fix it. So someone, someone at CIG needs to let this shit go and, and, and balance it, right? There's my rant over. But, like... And I know I'm not the only one, and I'm sure those people in chat that agree with me. Spectrum needs needs something drastic to happen because it's never going to go. Look, look, this whole question comes from that. Spectrum is never going to be what they want it to be. This gross, over used by everyone system. It's never going to be that because it is broken. Yeah, and I, I I still think people use, you know, the idea of Spectrum being the in-game system we use to communicate. Again, it's got the problem that it competes with Discord. Hmm. I don't think I've ever used the in-game voice in Star Citizen. I've always used Discord. So Citizen Scott says this. So he says, Spectrum is already toxic enough, dude. Don't need the same toxic people dogpiling for fun. They're dogpiling because they can't anonymously tell you that you are bad. What's better, the anonym anonymity of a downvote arrow or them they're venting at you because they can't vent with an anonymous downvoting arrow and guess what less dogpiling occurs because as soon as that post goes up and someone goes it's correct or it's wrong it filters it so as soon as you give it a downvote arrow it goes down so less people dogpile on if it sits at the top and just sits there in eyesore for everyone to see that's where the dogpiling occurs because everyone's trying to tell you are wrong and it won't get out of their way that's and why it, it's, it's as bad as it is. And it's been proven time and time again in every game where they've tried to remove toxic, toxicity by doing things like this, they've made it worse. That's why it's so bad. And we're in our infancy. When this comes along and we get all the kids coming in, like the 15-year-old little kids coming in, it's only going to get worse because there's no way to remove that shit. I'm sorry, but they, ha they are trying to have a leftist idea or a positive idea, and it is not working, right? It has been tried, it is not working, it has not been working since they've done it, and any other system that has tried to only have upvote arrows has failed. You can go look at all the other past examples. I'm not going to state them all here. Um, 
Uh, oh, we've got a raid from PC01. Thank you, PC01. Nice to see you, buddy. Yeah, I, I do think you do need to have the downloading. Yeah. You um, came in the middle of a raid. You've got downloading, and a file still goes up to the top. Even with downvotes, you can look and you can see this has got 1,000 plus votes. It's got 1,000 downvotes. It's still up there because it's still got all the high votes. But it gives you an idea. This is one that's splitting the community. Okay, go. Look, okay, look, this look, is worth looking at. I, I called it leftist, right? But what I'm trying to look yep. at is they're trying to do it in a positive way, but it's not working because you have to. I, I don't know how to phrase it, right? Right? I don't know how to phrase it. But whatever it is, yeah. it's not working, right? And they're trying to make a, a, a non-toxic environment, right? But all, all in, look, look, the game I'm thinking of is like League of Legends, where they tried to nail down all this toxicity stuff, and it wasn't the game, right? What it was was the game was a free-to-play game, and the people came in and they gave zero shits because there was no paywall, right? And so everyone came in and they just didn't care, right? Like, it, they, they just pissed and shit everywhere because they didn't care, because there was no punishment. Because if you ban them, they just got another game for free. I think you just go, you yeah. disable the ability to make comments and just have your own voting. And if it's a good post, it'll stay there because people will vote it up. If it's a bad post, it'll disappear because it'll be pushed down. That's how it's always been. And I don't know why. So this whole dogpiling thing, how do you learn in real life if you've done something wrong? Someone will tell you. They'll say, you're an idiot. You know, in really extreme cases, they'll punch you in the face. That's how we learn. You know, so, so when it's really bad, something really bad will happen to you in return. But this is even better because you're online. Nothing really bad can happen to you other than a downvote error. I would much prefer someone to anonymously tell me I have done stuffed up than and literally sit there and go, you are, a, you, you know, like, like cyber bullying type of thing. And there is no other recourse on on that forum than to do that. To go, this is really stupid, you are really dumb, blah, blah, blah. Because that's how they vent. They see what you're saying, and instead of just going, oh, that's so stupid, and, and downvoting, they sit there and dogpile on you. That's how, so, 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 so look at how much moderation they've got to do. If you allow us to moderate ourselves, aka give us downvote errors, the amount of moderation that they'd have to do would disappear. The amount of the complaints would disappear. Like... The, the fact that they're not even prepared to trial it is what, what scares me. And you don't have to trial it across the entire system. Just try it on one area of the site or one, you know, or, or even particular posts. Like if there's someone that has lots of dogpiling on their posts, try giving them downvote errors on their posts. And I guarantee you it'll all disappear. And, and, and do you know what backs me on this? All the psychological stuff that done by psychologists and stuff like that that have talked about. Like, um, League of Legends, so Riot Games brought in people to talk about this, and they fundamentally went through it, and they realized it was the, the free-to-play model that was causing the problem. Because, again, if, if you've got no fares or stakes in something, you don't care. So what they found was people that brought into the game and brought skins were better behaved generally, and I'm being generalistic here, than people that didn't put any money into skins because they didn't care. If, you've, if you're invested in something, you care. And it's the same reason why you and I don't go to Spectrum Aggro because we don't want to get banned. We care so much that we don't want to get angry that we don't go there. But we want but to I go there, but we can't go there because there's things that piss us off. It's it, Ironically, it's, a, it's the weirdest thing. Anyway, like, I feel like I'm rant Look, I think ranting. Look, downvote arrows aren't necessarily mm. people piling on either. It's just saying I disagree. Yeah. We're talking you about... Don't, you, you, do need, you, do need that neg you do need that negative feedback. You do need that positive feedback. Yeah. Downvote arrow, down arrows are not negative. It's just someone saying, I disagree with you. And when it comes to those questions, when it comes to those questions, those 10 questions that we want to get answers for, you actually want to know, if I post a question up, I actually want to know how many people agree with me, how many people don't agree yeah. with me. It gives an idea of where the community is really sitting at for that question. So, so, and if so, so, so let me give an example. Back when I did game development, you, you, um, they used to call it negative criticism, right? So if I do a model and I make a really model, I can come along to, to you and give you some feedback and go, oh, this is amazing and I can tell you all the great things about it. Or I can just point out the couple of negative things about it that you can fix and make it perfect. So from one perspective, negativism sounds really bad, but 
I like negative feedback because it tells me how to improve right and it's the same thing with this if, if you come along and you have an idea and a, con a concept and people you know it gets mostly negative views you know straight away it's a bad idea it's not no, I, it's I, not I, dogpiling it is literally democratic and I, I i don't think giving negative feedback by itself is ever a good thing if you just say no. this sucks because this you know, whatever that's no good no, you've, you got, you've got to say bad, why. You've got to say why. Explain why it's bad. Yeah. It's not negative criticism. It's constructive criticism that's that what you always want. And that's what you and I try and always do when we do a video. Like, I go, I we both say that. We don't want to do a negative video, right? Because we don't like to do, dogpile or make people feel shit. But if we do do a negative video, we will go into, do, like, what is the problem? What you need to do to fix it? And, like, fully detail it out. Don't, like, again, as Agra said, constructive criticism and it's exactly the same thing in this but people don't have time to do that that's why there is upvote and downvote arrows right and even spectrum itself has you go in and look at the, the, the picard face palm emoji has become the negative downvoting arrow on spectrum but it carries no weight i don't know anyway yeah, I, I, i'm not carrying on but like like it's just been on going on for years and cig if anyone's listening you need to trial it for a short period of time and i guarantee you things will improve it's very obvious and again go talk to size some you've got the money to do so go talk to some psychologist people they'll tell you everything i've said is true there is there's all this shit to back me up on it go, go look at it next question next question um Dijoko. with the distribution centers on the horizon i'm thinking of ma uh, maxing up my rep with box delivery company which one do you think I should work on? Like, which one do you think will have their own distribution company? Well, that was something they did talk about was different um, companies having different rewards, didn't they, Agra? I, I believe they mentioned yep. that at CitizenCon. So eventually it'll be, what do you want to work towards? You know, um, what will those rewards be? Like one manufacturer might favor the whole series another one might favor the band and mate. like it, it, it'll also come down to what ships you have and things like that so right now not so much difference but in the future drastic difference and again i don't think we can tell you that because we don't know as in what the rewards are going to be I haven't really shared that yeah and then you've also got the wipe as well um, as pc 101 uh, points out on twitch algorithm is there anything you want to add to that Agrid? I'm wondering if his powers come back on. Agrid. Okay, I'll move on. Uh, Citizen Scott says, question, have they said exactly how many distribution centers we will get with 3.23? Any ideas? They just said in the video a variety and they showed two photos. They showed uh, a kind of Asian aesthetic one that I didn't pick up the name because the writing I could read and the other one was the grey cat, which is what they've showed before. But they said a variety, so I assume a variety is at least three. Um, we'll have to, yeah, I'll have to wait and see on that one, but they didn't really say. Um, Darth Polvin says, will the Simpods ever go on ships as they should? I think, especially explorers and large ships. I think that would be a fantastic idea. Um, it'd be really great to be able to do things between uh, points as well. Um, and let's be realistic, like, that's something that... You, you see already in our lives like a, like a game boy or a switch um and probably vr headsets in the future and stuff like that so yeah i think that would be a great idea but as you kind of stated out of your question it probably needs to be bigger ships now agra has completely gone offline so that probably means his power has come back on and he's switching over to pc so fingers crossed he uh pops in on video shortly right uh Darth Polvin says, question, will... No, that was the one we just did. Eastley1975 says, do we think the unknown vessel is a medium mine layer as have done a fair amount of work on mines on the road? Do we think the unknown vessel is a medium... Where, where do you get this unknown vessel from? Eastie, uh, if you're on Twitch, mate, if you're still there. Eastie1975, where do you get this unknown vessel from? Is this... Is, I'm going to assume this is in the 
this roadmap thing. I'm gonna go back over to it and have a look and see if we can find it. So he says, un, is it unannounced? No, what did he say? Send in the question. He said, unknown. All right, so unknown, let's search for unknown. Unknown, there's no unknown. Unannounced. It wasn't announced though, so there's anything around Am I completely on the wrong one? Probably completely on the wrong one. There we go. Announced. Uh, that was so the unannounced ship progresses as well, receiving an updated lighting pass, including POMs. There's enough POMs on this game already. Um, POMs. I don't know what POMs is. Points. Oh, no, no, I don't know what that is. Uh, to meet the current visual standard, three different lighting states, standardized lighting, geo states, and glow in the thrusters. It also received material interfaces and other updates. An unannounced ship progress as well. Well, I think you could state that that unannounced shift is for Invictus. I think you guys would probably agree with me on that one. Uh, Eastie says the profile from Citizen Con, no one locked down the 12 profile ship, but um, the profile from Citizen Con that no one can lock down. Oh, yeah, the, the small ship is that the one you're talking about, Eastie? Yeah, um, and the question is putting it back in context, the question is. Do we think the unknown vessel is a medium might No, it, it is a small ship. That I can tell you 100% easy. Um, if you look at the video we did, we did a tinfoil hat video. It's got like a... I'll bring it up for you real quick. Uh... So if I go to our channel, uh, this one, and... Or is it it was just before AIE? This one. So if you go to this video here, um this in this video here we actually go through it all, but I explain if you lay it out, right, you can you can take the human. Now a human is normally like in model terms, a male human is usually 1.8 centimeter uh, one point eight meters tall or 180 centimeters. You take that and then you use him because he's next to the ship and lay him end to end. It roughly gave us, a, I think it was, I believe it was 26.3 meters long, which makes it a small ship. And so it limits what it can be drastically. I hope that answers your question. But yeah, watch this in detail and it'll give you more of an idea of what it could and could not be. Um, I'll link that for you specifically in Twitch because you're on there, Eastie. So here, I'll just, um, there you go, directly to you, mate. Right. Now I'm also starting to wonder did our so Agrid had his phone plugged into a UPS because his battery was almost flat. I'm wondering now if the UPS went flat and that's why he's gone offline. So he might not be back at all. Um, but we'll see. We're, we only got a few questions left anyway, so we're down to the last three questions anyway. Uh, Hook205 says, Question Will we have to pay insurance and parking on all ships for not flying and going broke? Yeah, you will have to pay insurance on all ships and parking. Um, but again, if you're not using a ship, um, outside the hangar, you just don't have to maintain that. You only pay the insurance when you take it out. So you might have a ship that sits there for a while and it's not paid for. Um, yeah. Uh, second last question. Michael Weaver says the DC, uh, the, the distribution centers are for distribution. What are the PVE loops? Where are all the other ships coming or going? Do you know deliveries? Why does CIG continue to only do P2 content? Because P2 content is easy and it's already done and they don't have the other gameplay loops. But as the other gameplay other gameplay loops come online, they'll be a part of it. So if you think of a, a certain manufacturer for salvage, you would then potentially go to that distribution center with your salvage and mining and whatever the other gameplay is as those gameplays come in. They will be fitted into that. Again, it's a foundational thing and as the foundation goes in, it starts out really simple, like with combat, and then expands out into other things. And combat is a foundational thing. It, it is like a bread and butter basic level thing. And yes, it might not be for everyone, myself included. Um, I, I tend to prefer more industrial as well, but I can do combat. Um, but yeah, it'll start there and move out to the others. Just, just give it time. We've seen it already. And let's be honest, we don't have much other gameplay in the game right now outside of combat. So we don't, you know, mining, salvage, basics of medical it's gonna it's gonna change a lot including this year now we've got more people working on it as well so yeah uh percy's a steel drop shop that's what i heard one day. 
Um, Mercer Mike says, do you change the day you do the streams? I recall occasionally catching this on Thursdays. Yes, it was on Thursdays in the United States, now Friday in the United States. Algrid had a schedule change at, at his school and they put him onto a fortnightly schedule and every second Friday he couldn't make it. And so we just decided to move the show to Australian Saturday so that way it's more consistent for you guys. Otherwise it would have been like a Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday. And we thought that that would be more annoying for you guys. So we thought we'd just do ju ju just the, uh, the Friday for you guys in the up over and Saturday here uh, in the down under. Um, but yeah, again, we, we did also say if, if you guys were finding that annoying to let us know, we haven't heard any complaints, we haven't heard any feedback at all, actually positive or negative on that. So if you want to uh, reach out to me or even let me know in chat now, uh, I'll try and pick up on that, but, um, it seems to be okay. I think viewing wise, we've probably got less viewers than normal because we are now conflicting with other content creators that are, they're doing their stuff on Friday. So from my perspective, I preferred the old time um just because it was it was our time you know there was a lot less competition so to speak um not that i'm in this for competition but i just i also like that time because um the inside star system would come out and we just watch it fresh with you guys now i've got people coming to me like yesterday i had three or four different people coming to me asking my opinion on it and i hadn't watched it and i had to tell them sorry i haven't watched it so you know uh it made it a bit more difficult um, all right, I'm going to have a look now Now that the questions are over and we've already done IC. I'm going to have a quick look on Twitch on who to raid and then we will raid out for today. Um, I do thank you for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure having you. Um, doesn't look like Agra's coming back, so um, hopefully he gets his power woes sorted um, in the not too different future. Let's have a quick look here who is on Twitch. We have... Let's have a quick look. Anyone... We haven't raided before. Espanol. Dutch. There's a lot of Dutch people on today. Um, a lot of Espanol too. Huh. Um, we've got... What about... Uh, what do you guys feel? Any, any recommendations on Twitch? Anyone anyone there that you guys feel like raiding? What about Angry, angry PC Tech? Or um, the other one I saw there, or Cobra. Anyone else there? You guys see that that we kind of know. I like to read the people that I know. Um, not the biggest Twitch viewer. I'm more of a lurker myself. Yeah, so I think I'll go with um. Since I'm not hearing anything, we'll go with um. Hmm. Yeah. We'll go. Uh, nope. No one's answering. Okay. I think we'll go with Cobra today. All right. So let's. Who's that? I think it said Cobra and someone else, and I just totally brain farted. We'll just go. Aldo Brink. He's raided us before. I'll raid him back. Get ready to start. The toast build is put. Advertising. Isn't it great? Right. Raid. Aldo Brink. Right. Make sure you say hello to him. See how he's doing. Oh, you want to. Oh, now you want to raid Cobra after I've typed in the other one. Right. Great. Too bad now. All right. Thank you for joining us on Twitch, YouTube, say goodbye to Twitch, Twitch, say goodbye to YouTube, and they're gone. Twitch is gone. Thank you for joining us. All right, those of you on YouTube, thank you for, you for like, subscribe, bring that notification bell. Thank you for those that went an extra mile. And I probably should have said before we left, don't forget about the GoFundMe uh, that we're doing as well. If I can do that, I'll do it for video purposes because this will be on YouTube later. Is this one? Yeah, GoFundMe. Uh, you'll find a link in the description. I'll add that as well. Um, yeah, if you want to help us get the CitizenCon. Other than that, thank you very much. All right, with that then, I've been executed. Agrid was the voice in the void. He's obviously uh, had problems getting back in and gone off to La La Land. Um, but with that, uh, we'll ha we do have an episode recorded for you guys. It'll be going out as well um, this weekend. With that then, I'll catch you next one. See ya. See ya, citizens. Bye.